We've just messed good shit. Yeah. I'll just hit record then. Okay. And then it can go. Okay. Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Double T British Kennels. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. That's right, that's me. Get that's your me. dogs got ready. A, we got a winner for the Patreon thing. It was Chris Kelsey. Kelsey. Chris Kelsey will be up. Uh, the video of us actually drawing it with a beautiful Vanna White, <clears> aka <throat> Clay Reed, and Clay is our guest today, the Coyote Man. Clay, how are you doing? I am wonderful. A brand new car. I've, I, there's a <clears throat> there's a video there's a, a series on Netflix. A guy memorized like all of the prices right. He watched it so long I've seen that, that he had everything. He knew every every blender, every sofa set, every car, and like th- like they accused him of cheating several he times. He smoked them. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. So now what now? <clears throat> he had watched so much of the Price is Right, and he's like a nerd, and like he created like spreadsheets and shit, and like he would play the prices. <laughs> fuck, waste their time on this shit. This motherfucker won a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and he would, and like so, you there was a rule you could only get you only get picked once for the Price is Right, <clears throat> but he went like thirty times, and it was like every time it like without fail somebody in my row would get picked, and they would figure out that I was this whiz kid. And like they would start looking at me, and I would like he had perfect bids all the time. It was like blender. But how did they know that he that he had these? He been on there he, already? No, 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 no. Like he was trying to get on, and then uh, people around him, like they would just get to talking, and like he was very knowledgeable about the prices and the prizes and all that stuff. And like it got to where they were like looking at him, and like he would fucking nail it. He'd tell them what bid to put in, they'd put it in, and it'd be on the money. And then finally he got picked, and he, of course, he had a perfect bid and all this yeah, other I, stuff. I like the video because that first one, you know, he comes up there and old Bob Barker, my line, hey, 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 Bob Barker, good. yeah. yeah so this is an right. old yeah, show. Yeah, so yeah, okay, this ain't the Drew Carey one then. No, okay, no. And as soon as he come up there, you know. He, they were all congratulations to you. Hey, where's my fucking hundred dollar bill? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. wanting that hundred dollar bill when you get to yeah, the get an exact thing. Yeah, uh, he so he won the double showcase. He won now, everything. He, he didn't get so he was with a guy, and this is kind of where it gets interesting. Is he sat next to a guy, and this was when they this Drew Carey had just taken over. They figured out they were going to let old contestants be entered into the pool. So he, the guy sitting next to him, got picked. He didn't get picked, but he was telling that guy the bids. And he gave him the exact bid, and the guy got the double showcase. But the guy didn't want to give him any credit. So I guess of, it was Drew Carey that he did. Yeah, because Drew Carey's like, what yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah, you're at. Because he's like, I just took over, and yeah, now all of a sudden, now. somehow they got an exact bid, and he's like, we're fucked. And they were like, they shut everything down when that bid came in. They shut it all down, and like, what are we gonna do now? Well, you're giving the shit away, anyways. Yeah, well, I know, but I guess it's never happened before. I don't the know coolest one that I seen right. on TikTok the other day was a, they had. Little old skinny gal on there, and that was the one where if you know you got to get your opportunity to win seconds. You got the thirty seconds to get this whatever your new car was was. So she had to guess the price of the first price. Uh-huh. She's got ten seconds to do them all, and so right off the bat, she gets the the first guess is the first one. On the first to answer, she said, 899. Bing! He's like, oh my. And this is to win a million. Uh-huh. And by God, she, she got nine seconds to come up with the right price of this, whatever it was. And that some gun, she does it she in about it. eight seconds and wow. wins a million damn dollars. Um, I saw a funny video on TikTok. You know, you always see those money booths where like the money's blowing up underneath your feet. Yep. And you gotta like fucking grab it. The, all you have to do 
and you can get all the money. Is this. Yeah, I remember that That's one. That's all you got to do. But so many people get in there and they're trying to grab shit. And this one guy gets in there and he just goes like this. He damn near got every damn yeah, dollar out of Almost every song. dollar. And I mean, it just starts accumulating. And then he kind of goes goes like this to hold it. But I can already tell. Don't I, panic. Me, me and Andy's watching the same bullshit. <laughs> well, y'all are watching too <laughs> much got, shit. We got the same FYP. <laughs> well, well, I ain't going to shit you. When I get home at the house, I, I lay on that end of the couch and watch TikTok. And Mama watches that the end of the TikTok. And occasionally we'll rub each other's feet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. what what do you you told me earlier you got rid of all your TV except for the grit channel. Yeah. Until Pretty football much. season gets here. Pretty much. And then yeah. when football season gets here, you'll become a regular American like me again. Yeah. And Andy. I've got rid of well, it. Well, I still too, I'll, I'll still like I've watched some of them USFL games here lately. Uh but it's on I, rabbit ears, right? It's yeah. just over. Well, the, yeah, you know, they got the them wireless rabbit ears. Wireless basically the same damn thing as yeah. but uh but uh yeah, it's crazy how many channels you can get for free. Yeah, we downloaded because I the did the same thing. The greatest is that Laugh Channel, which it's all the old channels that we used, me and you used to watch. I ain't watched Jeffersons or Archie Bunker in a <laughs> thousand years, and I got to watch him every night. They're on uh, uh, Amazon Prime has them now because oh. we've been watching Sanford and Son again, which I love. Fucking Amazon Sanford Prime Sanford. costs money. This is free, baby. What's get, it on? What channel is it on? It's uh, well, one's a Laugh Channel, and they got a other one. I think it's. Maybe Circle or Me TV. There's how, like three channels. How, how do these places run free? I don't know, but no. um, if you've got like a, how do you do it? You got like a Roku or what? Like a, are you getting your, are you getting your TV from the internet? Like streaming no, it? You're no. not streaming it? No, it's just like an old antenna. You come oh. off the back of your deal and put that deal in there. I put it up there on my window. Oh, okay. It's got like a wire. I mean, it's not wireless. You know, just like an antenna. And yeah. I'm, you know, they say you can get up to like 134 channels free. Oh, wow. If I'd go outside my house and yeah. really put up an antenna, I'd be able to, I get about, I think I get 28 yeah. channels. and But like say, I got all my three local channels and then I got, uh, but mine stays on that damn grit channel, which is all Western. All old Westerns. Yeah. But uh, like I say, they, and then they got the crime channel mm -hmm. And then uh, you gotta be careful with those. The wife starts watching those, and like they start. Yeah, that's plotting. what's bad. My wife, she's an expert at because she loves that shit. Yeah, she wants to be a forensic expert. <laughs> she wants to be a CSI. Yeah, you know your high school's got a hell of a class they have over there. Our part, yes. Um, damn, they were on last Schmitz. year. I can't think of where. Kim, your your old crush, Kim Price. Yeah, yeah, Kim Price, and. I'm going to look it up in my because I know I'm going to get it wrong. No, she's not my old cr crush. I still love her. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Wayne. We, uh, she just happens to be married, damn it. We had them on last year, but one the lady that he can't remember her name, she has a forensic, forensics class, and they will pick a serial killer like once a semester. Aaron, Aaron Nimitz, uh, Robbie Christie's sister, the one that was killed in the plane crash, his sister. I'll be damned. Yeah, nice, nice, nice lady, but she's I think she's the teacher's that class, and Kim, your old crush, or your new crush again, your same crush. Same crush. She teaches crush. home ec. Crush. 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 Yeah. But uh, Aaron teaches uh, teaches a uh, forensics class. I mean, or, damn. Is it, they do it. They have forensics. all kinds. They have Serial Killer Friday. Is that right? Yeah, Serial Killer Friday where they'll, every Man. every student will pick somebody. and You're going to you're gonna crush my wife. <laughs> She'll be going back to school. <laughs> I'm only 16. <laughs> I've seen your wife. She could probably pull it off. Yeah. Has some new titties. <laughs> they're they're, they're new not new even sixteen. Awesome. <laughs> they're not even sixteen. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 They'll pass. Yeah, I just stand there and look at them a lot of times. <laughs> man, those are awesome. <laughs> Wife's yeah. fifty five. Her yeah. titties are three. She <laughs> likes them. <laughs> so yeah. see, there you cut the distance and all that, and like she's. Yeah, I keep trying to get her on TikTok, and you know, I said, "God dang, we paid a damn lot of bills," you know. <laughs> so I'm not going on there. I said, "Yeah, hey, I see it all the time where them chicks get on there and they shake their boobies, but they're yeah, their they face. hide their face. Yeah, no, nobody even know. Yeah, hell yeah. And keep... if she's got pretty feet, like there's a whole other genre you can go down. Yeah, like, there's a lot to... of money. Would you let your wife have an OnlyFans? Me? Mm -hmm. I can give two shits to that some bitch and all that mother makes me my. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, it ain't like she's getting laid or anything, but, <laughs> right. but no, it wouldn't bother me damn It bad. wouldn't bother you at all? Me? Yeah, honestly. 
Uh, if guys are paying ten bucks a month to look, look at your wife's I'm cooter, I'm not that guy. <laughs> that wouldn't I'm bother not, you. I'm not that guy. <laughs> so if she had three thousand people paying her ten dollars a month, making thirty grand a month, you'd be okay with that. Yeah, as long as they're not at my house cutting that some bitch <laughs> or touching that. Yeah, I will whoop a some bitch's ass. But you are territorial. You, you too, look, but you ain't touching. Hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the guy that uh, got me them new titties when he was at my at where at the cafe, and I think a lot of guys are about half like that. I know that whole table was because we were all like, he was like, look at this. Oh, goddamn. And it was his old lady's titty. So there's seven of us at that table and didn't mind. Hell yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> said, yeah, it cost me damn money. Tell, tell the story about the old man talking about fucking another guy shitting. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I got I got to work on not throwing uh, names out. on. The Are bus. these guys even alive still? No, no, this guy, he, he finally died at 100, I think. At but, 100. Yeah, but he was like 92 at the time. We're sitting there at the feed store, and we're all playing um, dominoes. And, well, I just had to be there, and all them old men are at this domino table. <clears throat> and, and he's sitting over here on the side, and he's one of them stone-faced, never, he ain't got a gun to do voice, you know, and he never, never even hardly bullshits. You know, he's all about winning this goddamn domino game. He's sitting down there trying to figure out which rock he was going to play. And all of a sudden, old Jay over on the other side, Jay goes, he was talking about fucking, which anytime you get any age old men together, it's going to go back to screwing. And uh, anyway, old Jay goes, well, shit, boys, at my age, hell, I'd rather have a good shit than a good piece of ass. That's when old Lawrence, oh, Lawrence <laughs> he, he, he never even broke a smile. He goes, well, either I don't know how to shit or you don't know how to fuck. <laughs> and that blew up. That blew up the domino game. Them, them old men went to laughing their ass. Yeah. Either I don't know how to shit or you don't know how to fuck. And he had a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've old men are great, cause, though. Because I ain't never took a goddamn shit where I was like, oh, my God, that was so awesome. Yeah. I mean, I've had some yeah. great ones. Too. Wish they give me a pill so I could do that again. Yeah. 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 How is the medicine for the old pecker working for you? I don't take no medicine. <laughs> That's what that girl said at the office. Yeah, oh, I know it. Yeah, yeah. It's probably all over the goddamn deal. But now I'm about ready to go see that old boy again, too. I got, you know, talking about your, your buddy with the cancer. You know, it's, it ain't worth that age where you got to get that blood work checked out pretty quick. Yeah, I need to do it, too. I just hate going. I last went to the doctor. They's like, listen, you want a prostate exam? I'm like, well, fuck. Who wants one, you know? I mean, yeah, that one well, guy said yeah, I guess there's a bunch it, of Bud Light drinkers that want awesome. them. Yeah. That one guy, that last doctor we had on said they don't do that anymore. No, they don't. But now oh, they have you work. shit in a box. Oh. I don't know that I want to do that either. There, there's a box. It's Can you called, imagine that somebody's job? It's Colon Guard is the name of it. And well, the good thing about where I go, there's a good-looking little intern gal that she does it, so it's not like it's queer. It's kinky. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's kinky, right. you know? Oh, yeah, okay. You can do whatever the hell you want, honey. <laughs> but yeah. they uh, they send you this box, and you go home, and you shit in a box, and you ship it to them. <clears> so when the UPS guy picks it up. He's got a box of shit. And then they, that's how they that's one way they do it, or they could do the blood work. Have uh, You know, you're speaking about the, the little girl putting her finger in your ass? Yeah. Well, this has nothing to do with a finger in your ass, and I can't even, I, f I lost completely what I was going to talk about. Oh, I know what it was. Anyway, well, me, we went the other day, me and Michelle, we went and got our nails done, and I get a, I get a uh, pedicure while Michelle gets her nails done and painted and all that shit. I love the pedicure, I'm not going to lie. Well, the lady, awesome. the lady that used they to do awesome. my pedicure is a girl named Crystal. She's, she's Vietnamese, Chinese, Korean or something. She's in Abilene and she's went to a new place. So if you know where she's at now, please let us know so I can switch back to her. <laughs> her and her husband, Tom. Tom did Michelle, Crystal done Jeff. Anyways, I got a new, this new lady. And she, I don't like her very much. She's a little faster. She's not as good. But when I go in there the other day, there's four guys rubbing feet. And there's no girls in there. And I told Michelle, I said, I'm not doing this shit. It ain't happening. She goes, Jeff, I said, no, I'm telling you right now. If there is a fucking guy comes up, I'm going to get up and leave. How are you going to do that? I said, I'm going to take my fucking fat, two fat ass, my feet, and I'm going to take my fat ass, and I'm going to walk right out, and I'll wait in the car for you. It ain't happening. I said, I ain't having no fucking guy rub my fucking feet. Now, Jeff, what if I done that? If they, they have a woman work on me, I said, lesbians are cool. I said, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing that shit. So the guy that owns the place, you know, Michelle goes there all the damn time, and he's, oh, yeah, how, how are you? How's Michelle? And I said, I'm doing good. I said, listen, bud. I said, I ain't having no fucking guy touch my feet. Oh, I know how you are. I understand. Trust me. We we, we, we know. We know. I said, okay. So we'll make sure we get that shit out in the clear because my ass is getting up and going home. Yeah. I'm part lesbian, but I ain't no part gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is a difference. Yeah. Would you let a guy rub your feet, Andy? 
Uh, oh, you're a new, you're a new modern guy. Yeah, he, he yeah. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's answer enough. Yes. I don't get, uh, I don't get pedicures. So, would you let if you went in to get a pedicure with Jesse and it was a guy that come to rub your feet? I don't really think that I, I'm not going to get pedicures. I don't like people touching my feet. I got a foot thing. I'm oh, like, right. I, yeah, oh, man, they're fucking awesome. I don't Last like. Year, I don't like first people time touching I ever my went shit. To one, I mean, it was almost like jacking off. It was. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. awesome. And yeah. the, and the, the what's funny is is where we go to in Abilene, they're going to get a free plug here. I think it's called Hot Nails or something. There's a place next to it called the Sunflower Massage Parlor or something. So I always get done about ten minutes before Michelle. So I always go. Is this a rub and tug? Yeah, I'm assuming that's what it is. Yeah. And so uh, I don't want to say that because. I'm liable now that I said that. I didn't say the name of the place. I did too, but I don't. I don't know what that goes on there. But I always go and get. I'm in ten minutes before Michelle does. About so I walk out and I get in the car and I sit and I watch the people go in there because I always think, hey, this guy come out the other day and I was gonna ask him how was it. And I was like, I come so close, going, hey, hey, bud, how was it? And some lady pulled in. I was like, some bitch couldn't do it. Well, the best of it got my my. I got inquisitive, so I opened the door the other day in there to see what it was. It's just a. It's a plain door with a buzzer on there. Bzz, and nobody's in there, so there's something freaky going on there. They wouldn't have it like that. But I, two I girls know. pulled up the other day. I'm sitting there waiting. This truck pulls up, and these two hotties get out. And one of them was a really pretty good looking girl. She went in, went in there, and I thought, well, there blows my whole image about being a rub and tug. I think it's just a rub, not a tug. They come out like five minutes later. I said, oh, I guess I went and got their paychecks, got in a truck, and drove off. But they were both pretty attractive gals. Well, I didn't know they had them. You know, here a while back, Wichita got busted. But- like five of them mm-hmm. have five of them. I didn't know it. And then, and then I had a buddy, he comes in and he tells me, he goes, Hey man, Clay, where, you know where rub and tug is over in Wisconsin? <laughs> Hell no. I think it busted them all. I said, I didn't know anything about it. I was mad as a motherfucker. Nobody told me about <laughs> rub and tug. You know, I'm the last one to know. And he goes, well, old so-and-so said there's, there's, there's still one over there. And I said, Oh really? But, oh, oh, really? Give me, the, <laughs> give me the info on that. And sure enough, he goes over there and he gets a rub and tug. I said, you get a rub or a tug? And he said, oh, I got the full meal deal. <laughs> the full meal deal. deal. Oh, yeah? Uh, I was like, damn it. We, we have a friend then. 65 he, for a uh, tug and $100 for the full meal deal. <laughs> we, have, we have a friend that does that. and uh, He does that. <laughs> he uh, evidently... He's he's a real champ, and the lady was like, "Oh, you strong man, you like you go long time, you go long time, don't you?" That's dude, he, you he, strong man. He didn't know that's what he was getting into. His buddy talked him into going in there, yeah. and she goes, uh, "Take your shorts off." He goes, well, "I didn't know how good of friends we were, so I took my shorts <laughs> off." And then she goes, "For hundred dollars more, she goes, I'll make sure everything's happy." He said, "Hold on," he said, "I got dressed, ran out my truck, had to get some money, come back in." <laughs> <laughs> he's going through the ashtray, yeah. getting his out. He told me, he told us, he goes. Every time that door would go open, I'd hear that bzzz, door would open. He'd be like, oh, fuck, they're fixing a raid here any minute. They just know it's going to be raided. <laughs> cops are coming. So he had a hard time finishing knowing that the cops are probably on the way. Shit, so, man. So, I, <laughs> so she's like, oh, you strong, man. You last forever. I can get a bargain with my ass. <laughs> it's been so long since I touched a straight titty. I'd be like forced. I'd be like forced jump. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of our mutual friends. That you played softball with, one of my best buddies in the world. Yeah. He he went to, uh, I think it was in Nashville, Tennessee is where he was at. He was on a moving company working. And he went to one, and this guy driving the truck told him, he said, hey, you need to bring an extra $100. He goes, what for? He said, just trust me. You'll be glad you did. And they went to a place called the Bamboo Gardens. And I love when he tells this story. He said, you know, he's a big, big man. And he's standing at that table, and he said, that girl put her finger on my anus. And he goes, I about crawled over that table. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I go, well, how was it? He goes, we went another time while I was there also. <laughs> Did he use the anal beads? <laughs> I don't know what all he used, but he said it was a it was an experience. But he he knew the name of it, the Bamboo Garden. I don't know if it's open still, but it, well, I bet he does. Ready for a return trip. Oh, but God, it was a great story when he told that story. You know, I, I'll tell you, I went on that trip to Georgia, and it, it blew my mind. Yeah, I couldn't find no no good looking women. In I Georgia, mean, not not a one. I figured Georgia peaches is everywhere, and it blew my mind. But I tell you, one place I did run into them. You know, I I I, I was hesitant on putting my little cowboy box on the on the back of my truck. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. My little camper deal. Well, first thing I did was get stuck in Dallas traffic, and then it was showtime. 
we're stopped and everybody's getting out taking pictures of my truck my little quirk deal and then one guy he come pulls up beside me roll down you went on He's Roger. He's a big fan of the Big Honker Law. Listen to every one of your dang good podcasts. Oh, really? da, 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 da. All right, get the support. But those are cool fans. But then I get to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And I, I go uh, in there into a Valero to get gas or whatever. When I come back, there was five college girls, every one of them blondes. So they're Daisy, Mississippi. Daisy Dukes and Bikini Tops. And they want to take a picture of the coyote man, a group photo. So we had this little black lady take a picture of it. And, but I guarantee you, there was. Did you looking. share the picture? No, I didn't even get. Well, I was I was hoping them girls were supposed to go to my Facebook page, find blah, 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 give them the whole deal. So you ain't so got it yet? I have not got that yet, but it'll, it'll show up somewhere around the Did you autograph any boobs while you were there? I did not autograph any boobs. I didn't autograph any asses either. Though, but, so those were young, real boobs. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, they were gorgeous. Are and, you having camera issues, Andy? Yeah, yeah. And it's what? And that was the first story I had to tell my wife. She was sure proud. I don't give a fuck. I said, but they were cool, and they wanted to take a picture with the guy. Oh man, goddamn it! <laughs> I was so happy. I was so proud. I said I was regretting bringing that damn uh, uh, camper, but boy, I was cool. And same with Thomasville, Georgia, where I went. Did you go see the tree? The tree? Never mind. Go ahead. Uh, There's a famous tree in Thomasville, a big oak tree. Well, I saw a famous tree, but it, it was, I don't want to be famous for being at that tree. <laughs> okay. You, you got that right. Yeah. Because I, I went, man, I seen these, this old, old, old house out there and got the story on it. It was an old slave house, blah, blah, blah. It was that tree. Yeah, it was that <laughs> tree. And the, and the ropes are still up there. And I was like. No way. Oh, yeah. It was it was a little wild. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to be caught on this road after dark. <laughs> no. on TV. Yeah, have a, yeah, I have a picture of Clay Reed underneath the, but they underneath had a the hunting, hanging tree. They had a hunting store there. Uh, I think it was called Ken's, Ken's Hunting show downtown thomasville georgia and then when i pulled up with the coyote man wagon because it's all tourists in thomasville they were everywhere boy they flocked on the coyote mobile i mean it's all over but i go into ken's in there and uh and i was really kind of surprised you know i bought a shotgun sleeve that you know a real nice some gun for like 30 bucks it was cheap really? and you know it would have been long story short i get over there and i figured out that clay reed Ain't made for quail hunting in Thomasville, Georgia. Why? Because Clay don't have near enough money. Oh. And they had these damn bow yeah. ties. Yeah. Had these bow ties. You got to hunt with a bow tie and a tuxedo jacket mm -hmm. to quail hunt. And they had they had blue silk, uh, green silk tuxedo jackets with these bow ties that cost like five hundred dollars. You know, they're made out of quail and some of them made out of pheasant. I mean, what, nice. Was this tree in Thomasville? Yeah, I'm, it I'm looking. It's it. in Thomasville. I'm sorry. It's a is big it tree. One? That's it right there. The Thomasville. No, that's not, that's not that's it. That's not it. No, the, the one on the left. Left. You're the left up now. That's, that's it the right there. same tree, homie. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, that's the same yeah, tree. Look at all that shit. I did not see that tree. That is, that's like a that's real famous deal. That's that's the tree. It's a it's it's very famous. Like if you buy if you went into a, a furniture store and they got Thomasville furniture there, on their box is a picture of that tree. Oh, but damn. They got a bunch of trees in Tom, but you know I am in Colorado. I I suffer from boulder anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, a rock falling and hitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Thomasville, Georgia, I had tree anxiety because there were fallen trees everywhere. You're a flatlander. And, and, yeah, and I'd say, man, that's what I was telling old Chris. Was, he did, yeah, you know, God dang, I'm, I'm scared to death when these damn trees falling <laughs> on because they're all over the road. You know, they canopy yeah. all over them son of bitch and he. Oh, it happens pretty regular. And sure enough, that night uh, we were hunting. It was actually in Florida. We come down the road, and there's a big old giant tree laying across the road. Oh, well, there's one right there. I mean, just everywhere in the tree. He said, yeah, when they fall on the highway, you know, they make big wrecks and blah, blah, blah. But, God, it was beautiful. Quail like I'd never seen. Yeah, I saw your live where you said that, you know, they're just everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Like you never it's, heard. Yeah, and like I say, you're not allowed to get off the road from mm -hmm. like I think it's May 1st to October 1st not even to walk out there cause they because they don't want you stepping on them eggs the eggs or, any, or disturbing them or nothing. and man it's so cool to get up in the morning mm -hmm. I mean just 
every five minute. seconds, just, just all over. I taught him how to whistle up quail. You did? Yeah, yeah. I said, stop the rig. You know, he's in one of them uh, ATVs, and there's a pair of them. Here he come. Do you uh, think you were the poorest guy there? Uh, poorest? Yeah, I like didn't have as much uh, money. Yeah, I was the poorest property owner. I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you that. But no, they, that, yeah, it, no, like I say. How far, how close were you to the Okefenokee Swamp? Uh, I don't know where the Okefenokee Swamp it's is. It's on the Florida Georgia line. Well, I, we were five minutes from Georgia line. I mean, Florida line. Like day one, I hunted in Georgia. Day two, I hunted in. Uh, uh, what was the name of the town you were in? Uh, Palmsville, Boston, Boston, Georgia, Boston, Georgia, a little old town, about like Archer city. Got a really good cafe in it called the Boston, Boston did, street cafe. Did y'all call up any coyotes while you were there? Very, <laughs> very few. Really? Just but like I say, when I left, I, I told them it's going to be tough because we had a full moon and, and a east wind and it, those are one, one or the other is bad enough by himself. Right. You put a couple of them together and, Shit, that first night we finally, I finally got hell out. Oh, I killed one in a watermelon patch and like broke my daggone neck slipping on watermelons and, and <laughs> stepping on them and finally got that and we went to bed. It was late, probably four o'clock at night. And then next night we went to Georgia and it was the same deal. And finally about, hell, I bet it was five o'clock in the morning, coyote come in, but from a far I had to shoot him from like 400 yards. I think he ranged at 425, I think. Did you hit him? Yep, I got him. At 400? 425. Yeah, Chris. That's a poke. That was a poke. Yeah, and and the pressure is on (laughs) because we're running out of of night. You're right. And, uh, yeah, it was was suck. And uh, Noki Fidoki Swamp is way east of there. It's on the other side of Valdosta. Oh, yeah. Did you see some alligators while you were there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we wind up getting that. Uh, I'm gonna try to catch one of them damn alga. And it wasn't. It wasn't about four footer. You, you get know? some pointers here, Andy, on how this works. That's did you do it? Huh? Did you do it? Well, I grabbed a hold of him, but the son of a gun turned inside out. And damn near got me. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and and Chris. Could you imagine he, being in the water with Chris, one doing that? Yeah, Chris. He's got a stick trying to get it on his mouth so I can get on get a hold of it on him. And but after that, after I gave that son of a gun about tail and that sucker whooped around, yeah. I was like. Let's go kill a cow. <laughs> Man, I better stick Did with you see I'm... a lot of gators? Huh? Did you see a lot of them? No, that was the only one I seen. And he wasn't anywhere near water. He's out there in the woods. You see a lot of snakes? In, in a rat. Never saw a snake. That's a good day then. Yeah. He's, you know, they got they got the same thing going with their snakes. They're getting them hogs. You know, hogs are finally getting them. And, uh, good for the hogs. Yeah, and they're getting them snakes. As a matter of fact, he said, you know, they got them big, beautiful, freaking eastern diamondbacks. They're giant. And he said, hell, they won't hardly kill them now because there ain't nearly as many as there used to. He said, used to, you see them all the time. Kind of like my country. Used to, you couldn't go 100 yards without killing a rattlesnake. I saw our buddy Dirk at Boss wants to see a rattlesnake so bad. That's his whole deal. We went tornado chasing and we talked about it. We went tornado chase with him. The next week I went, saw a fucking rattlesnake out here. And I hadn't seen many rattlesnakes. I have not seen this spring. I don't think I've seen three or four rattlesnakes maybe. Hell, I ain't seen me hogs. We got something going up in our country where the hogs are uh, going away. I mean, uh, even the boys out at Wagner said the same thing. Said, man, you know. They Maybe got have, a disease. Yeah, that's that's what we're thinking. We, well, you, you couple that with nowadays you got so many helicopter outfitters and then you got some, uh, well, like uh, <clears throat> Dry Creek out, outfitters over there. They're taking out five guys a night. Right. And, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they kill a lot of hogs. Doing thermal, you you do that. You start so catching. You start ki- killing your resources pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. You well, would figure I, so. That's like in 2018 when they first brought them thermals out. My deal. You know that one field. The first time I put a thermal to my eye, there was probably 800 that I could see. I ain't seen a hog on that field in three years. You've been shooting them all. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, eventually you're going to catch up to it. I don't think I killed them all, but I think they're smart enough that they get the memo. Don't fucking get on clay. Yeah, dude, we feel you, down here. What's the biggest rattlesnake that you've ever caught or seen? Uh, probably right at, well, now we had our hands on one that was over seven foot. 
we we got uh, up there where I, uh, the ranch I run. There's an old parky mansion built in 1926. You know what? Mansion. What'd you call it? A park? Parky. parky? That's the people. Oh, that name's yeah. Neil yeah, Parky's family. family. Parky uh, and uh, it's built in 1926. Big giant son of a bitch. Matter of fact, I'm fixing to have to tear it down and start. Well, and I hate it, but anyway, uh, there's a basement <laughs> underneath it. And when I went to work for Parky's back in 1994. All I'd heard about was this giant rattlesnake that was up there at the Parky Mansion, lived in the basement. I'm like, ah, bullshit. How big a house is this? Oh, we're fucking, you know, two story and it's got four or five thousand square feet. Oh fuck, no, we're talking like ten thousand square feet. Wow. I mean, and yeah, just it's, it's just melt, it's just wasted it's fall, away, falling down. Oh, is that it's terrible. Hell, I just that now sucks. had electricity turned off. Electricity was still, yeah, it's still in pretty good shape, but the. Uh, uh, living room ceiling caved in, fell, oh. fell out, and uh, sounds but, like a snake trap and a half. Oh, dude! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and old Ben Easter went in there the other day. Was checking out, and we come in. And I go, God dang the, the damn ceiling fell on. I was looking over there, and old, all of a sudden, old Benton goes, "Oh shit! There's a bobcat!" And I looked up, and there's a bobcat. I said, God damn sure is. And all of a sudden, that somebody's come to us. And you talk about two fat son of bitches <laughs> crawling over top of each other. And, and we didn't know which way to go. We was running in. He finally went one way and I went the other way. We don't know where the fucking bobcat went, but we was getting out of him. But anyway, so all I heard about when I went to work for Parky was this big giant rattlesnake. So, uh, well, me and Sam Baruby, my partner, he was, went to work here with me too. We gonna go in the snake catching business because it <laughs> paid like five fifty a pound. Yeah, you can make well, money. Yeah, a we seven made, foot snake is worth about ten thousand alive. Well, that's we had found a dude that would give us a hundred dollars for every inch past six foot, and but anyway, I hadn't even seen this fucking snake, and we we're rookie snake hunter. Matter of fact, the <laughs> rookie first, snake hunters. We're the first fucking uh, snake we have we got. We built us a little snake box. We're two dumb as some bitches. We got us a little <laughs> snake box because we knew where this big den was on the Estel Pass. Redneck getting rich quick. You goddamn right. <laughs> we're either, either going to die or we're going to get us a new 10 speed. And so <laughs> we go speed. out there. We, got, we had enough money to buy us one deal uh, catcher, snake catcher. Got our box. And we pull up that first fucking uh, snake den. And just the naked <clears throat> eye. We can see 47 rattlesnakes. Mm. And I mean, I ain't shit near the hair stood up on mm. my asshole. It's making my hair stand and, up and, now and, thinking and, about and it. And I've got the rat, I got the snake catcher, and I go, <laughs> you go, you go, <laughs> you go first. And those, those Sam's like, nope, you had them first. You go first. <laughs> you know, most of your rattlesnake hunters are going to catch your biggest yeah. and the smallest. No, sir. We started, I, I found me a little uh, western masaga that gets about that big, and I said, okay, now your turn. <laughs> we went back and forth. Well, then about two years later, you know, we're goddamn professionals, but we happened to go up there to that basement to check to see if there's any snakes in there and this giant snake. Right. Because we'd found that guy from Houston to give us so much money. So we get down there in that goddamn basement one day and me and Eddie, the boss, we're looking around, looking around, and all of a sudden, nope, nope. And nope. I was like, oh shit. Well, He's, when you go down in the basement, it's a big basement. And are there lights? A, light? Can you turn on lights? There is a light, okay. but you know. Not a very good one. There, there's big windows over here, so. Okay. You know, it's it's pretty light in there, but there's a lot of shadows, <laughs> a lot of shadows that, ah, ah, and uh, so anyway, but there's a big, like a furnace over here in this one deal, mm -hmm. and eye level is the crawl space that goes underneath the house, and it's open, you know, it's got a space about that big, no. and it's all around, so we hear it, well, when we hear it, it sounds like it's coming underneath that furnace, that shh. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh shit, oh shit. So we're looking, we're looking, we're looking. We can't, we don't, can't find the snake. I said, it's got to fucking be here. And I mean, it's echoing in this damn deal. And then all of a sudden, I looked up and eye level at some bitches at the crawl space at eye level. Mm. And I got big old fucking hands, you know, big, big hands. Yeah. That some bitch's head was as big as that goddamn fist. And of course, me and old Stanley or uh, Sam, we go, oh shit! <laughs> well, Eddie, he pulls his forty-five. He's gonna kill us. No, you can't kill us. Twelve hundred. The whole reason we're down here. <clears throat> Let me backtrack a moment. I was building spurs out of this garage of this deal, and I still thought this snake was a fantasy. Yeah. And then one day, this is about two months before this, 
this day. I'm sitting there grinding on some spurs, and all of a sudden I look out there, and that snake has come across that uh, the driveway. Got the heebie-jeebies. The driveway is seven foot across. It's like an old timey day, so it ain't very wide. <clears throat> seven foot across. But that snake is hanging off of both ends at one time. So we knew he's seven foot plus. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, shit. So anyway, here we are. We got this snake under crawl space up there. And Eddie's going to shoot it. And I was like, no, motherfucker. We got to catch this snake. <laughs> so we, me and Sam, we go outside and we find us a piece of suck rod, bend the end of it so we can jerk him down <laughs> off, off of the crawl space down into the basement floor. Then we got him. Can't get away from us then. We can get it. <laughs> you can't get away from him either. I mean, it, uh, handling a five foot rattlesnake yeah. is fucking tough. A seven foot, and I guarantee this son of a bitch is that goddamn big around. He is monster. And I know we're going, so we know that the best thing we do is just jerk him down into the floor. So there's an old, well, Sam's not very tall. How big he, did you he, say his, his head was? As big as his big fist. As my fist. Yeah, so his, his his whole mouth when he opens it up would almost be your whole oh, face. Oh yeah, and his god dang uh, uh, rattlers, I mean, it was um, a six inches, Shh, just wave, and I'm going, holy shit! So we get this damn piece of sucker rod with a little hook on the back deal, and <laughs> Sam, he, there's a rocking the old rocking chair. He stands up in that rocking chair, and I'm holding the rocking chair still. I mean, we look like a monkey fucking a football out there on this deal, and he's jerking on this something, but he can't do it. Hey, that ca that, that snake, snake staying in there had got around one of the uh, joist. Yeah, that go uh, and got on there and was holding that summit, and we never could get that summit. And then he finally overpowered Sam and got away from us. We never seen the summit again. No <laughs> shit. But I'm telling you, that some bitch was. There's a family in Old Glory that hunts with me, and they're a real prominent Fort Worth family. But they have a uh, they have a house there. And the guy and his wife would go. They they pheasant it with dad every year. Used to while well, dad was still alive, they'd come pheasant it with us a couple times every year. And the guy was telling dad about. He said we come home and someone had been in our house. Stuff would be knocked off the shelves and shit. We could never figure out what it was. Neighbors see nobody. You know nobody knew nothing was going on. Well, middle of the night, heard something racket in his damn closet, and he turned the light on, and there's a fucking snake in there that's about like the one you said about seven foot long. And it was the light. It was living in that house, and they didn't know it, and they were there all the time. And it was knocking shit off the shelves and stuff. That's how big it was. And I think I think it was like six foot three inches or something. It was Fuck a big, that. big, big have ass. Have you snake. seen this video? We might have burned that house. That, yeah. What is that? You haven't seen this video? No. Yet? Oh Jesus. They got a snake. Oh in the room. fuck that shit! No <laughs> hell no. More than oh, one. Oh hell More no. More than one. Oh, I just shit in my well, pants. Welcome while I live in to that Florida. House. <laughs> <clears throat> they just thought they had one. They, well, they didn't know what they had, and then the whole ceiling collapses. Oh, and it's just all pythons. Yeah, fuck. Good that. lord. Oh, oh mm -mm -mm. No. that's when that little high taste. <laughs> <Scrant. laughs> we got off the boat at the Liberty Bell, or at the, at the Liberty Bell, the, a statue, one? a statue of Liberty, and there was a two black guys, and they had pythons had to be 12 to 16 foot long there and people were coming up and taking their pictures with them and shit. Like, that. There's, Negative I scared rider. to death of that shit. Look at that that's thing. in Australia there. Well, it doesn't matter. That's still a real fucking, it's a real thing I that know, people yeah. have to contend with. Yeah, I mean, look well, at that. Well, it's like that one I caught at Florida the other day. It was like 19 foot. 19 foot yeah. is a freaking monster. Yeah. Andy, do you really think with what you're fixing to have to be doing next month, you need to be looking at these videos of snakes and shit? Well, I'm not wrestling him. Well, I understand, but you got to get in that swamp water. Uh, where about y'all going? We're going to be in Venice, Louisiana. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shit. Yeah, at least she ain't in Florida. They're in Florida. You know, they got them anaconda. It's a wild yeah, place out pie. there. Yeah, it's a bounty. They got the bounty and them suckers going, <clears throat> making fortune, catching them. Do snakes scare you? Me? Yeah. No. Not no, at all. I don't so. want to sleep with one, but. Right. They don't bother you. No. They like, if you know where like it that. is, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If I see one, I will jump away from it. I ain't gonna, <laughs> man, I, you know, I'm not going to. But, no, nah, they don't bother. They bother the fuck out of my buddy Benton Bowman. When he steps off the plane, he's got his snake leggings on. And uh, here, uh, last year during that Coyote Day deal, he stepped on a water snake. And I guarantee, and it was the middle of the night over at the feed yard. He was done. 
Oh Lord Jesus! Wow, go on. I said, just what is it? It's a fucking snake. Yeah, I'm, I'm with him. Do you know where uh, Burke Royalty's uh, yard used to be on Jacksboro Highway? Yeah. Tony worked there when he was in college, and um, they had a pond behind there. It was a really good fishing pond, too, and we was going fishing. And we did the old redneck, poor boy way. You just wait around in some shorts and fishing pole and catch fish. Think nothing of it. Right. Well, it got wet. That one summer, it rained a bunch. It was a little deeper than that, so we got some tubes. We're tube fishing, and I had a fucking water moccasin try to come in my fucking tube. I ain't never been back there and fished again in my life. I had a beaver. They had a beaver in that pond, motherfucker. He brushed that my fucking beaver, That beaver's bad. That enough. motherfucker brushed my leg. God almighty. I'm Jesse Owen across that motherfucker. <laughs> Fat guy running on water. Jesus look Christ, like, boy. Look like choo, Richard choo. Pryor. Oh, yes. Toy. You remember what yes. he said? Yeah. That's, I, I was doing the same thing from that fucking beaver. Well, you don't ever want to go to Lake Buffalo. You know, like I say, I'm not real scared of uh, snakes. And me and Mitch is over there a couple of years ago and we're tubing. Yeah. And along the dam. I ain't never seen so many damn snakes. I counted 12 at one time around me. Screw that. And I'm, I'm whooping them some bitches off. Water mo- I, like water snakes? Yes. Yeah, little water snakes. You, uh, They're all I, fucking water moccasins yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. They're all poisonous and bad. I, I wasn't testing them to figure out what they was, but they kept trying to get on my tube with me. And I'm whooping them some bitches. And I'd holler to Mitch, Mitch, you have a problem with snakes? Oh, I seen one a while ago. I said, I got 12 of these motherfuckers around me. We're leaving. We're leaving. I said, they're trying to get in a tube with me. <clears throat> yeah, I like to say. Yeah, I, I don't like that shit at all. I don't like them. That's some bitch. It t- I did. I got but I left. will tell you this. They will turn you into a finely tuned athlete. Oh. They will turn you. Because the last den of snakes we ever hunted, me and Sam, we went to this place on the East Heifer pasture over there, and there's a ledge. And that ledge drops down to another ledge. And we had seen a big mob of snakes from the bottom. So we come up top. And, of course, this is about two and a half years into it. I'm professional. Snake yeah, you're professional now. now. I'm professional. Hell, we don't even think twice about it anymore. You know, we're down there flip-flops and shit. <laughs> and so uh, so Sam, I put the box down there on the second tier ledge, right? Sam's up top, and he's got a big stick. And I, that way he can flip the lid open for me and flip the load shut. <laughs> so I jump down there and put a ticket box, put that nail down there. And, of course, I'm catching the big ones now. I ain't going for the little ones. I want the big ones. And there's this one big son of a bitch. You know, he's about five foot, but he's real fat. Boy, and I, I got a hold of that son of a gun. I said, God dang it, <laughs> son of a bitch. You know, they're wiring it. And I go to, and Sam flips the. Uh, lid open and I stick it some bitch in there and I'm trying to hurry and get back. So his job is once I get him in there, shut the lid on me, right? Mm-hmm. And then I go, I dive back into my work because there's two more big son of bitches and I want to get a hold of them. And then all of a sudden, so I go back down there and uh, all of a sudden I hear Sam go, look out! <laughs> well, I thought he was talking about one of these big motherfuckers I was working with. <laughs> the one that was behind me, the first one, had got out and come in. So I jumped backwards, and when I jumped backwards, I straddled that big son of a bitch, and he's going, you know, striking at me, and I'm, I look like Fred Astaire, but I ain't shooting at that ledge. is about that big, and I bunny hopped it like nothing. And I was like, we're done. We're we, done. we took our, we sold our snake catchers, our <laughs> snake box, went to war rig, and we were out of the business. I guarantee you, you couldn't drive a toothpick up my ass with a sledgehammer that day. <laughs> I have to, I have to push that. Like during turkey season, it takes me a while. Oh yeah. You, I mean, I just, I'm not comfortable because, like, you sit down on a tree or whatever, and you're like, hmm. yeah, you wait, you you wonder call if one, one up. Drop, wonder if one drop behind me. You but, get you get up there turkey hunt. You wait, you call one up. Mm. No. Yeah, because Omar, ask old Mitch next time he's up here about him and Marvin when they were, uh, like, they called up a rattlesnake. Really? Yeah, they were over there on the kinder and, and there's an old cow trail and they're up in these rocks. And, you know, old Marvin, he's smoking that old cigarette and he said, Look at there. See that rattlesnake down there? And this old snake, boy, and he's looking. Looking? Around. Said old Marvin, <laughs> he'd hit that call and that goddamn snake could hit a glove. Oh, fuck that. And then really? next thing you know, he was. Marvin like, God damn, I think that's some bitches coming to the call. He quit and that old snake look around. Miss <laughs> like, don't do it no more. Don't do it <laughs> again. No more. We gone. Yeah. We gone. But hell the the other day, my buddy, who was it? I think it was Sean Morrison. He's in his dozer or traco, I think it was. And uh, you know, he's pretty good high off the ground. He's do uh grubbing these mesquites and all of a sudden he looks out there and about 
and level with him is this big ass giant rattlesnake laid up in this mesquite tree. I would shit all over myself, uh, which that kind of happened over there on Lake Kickbo. You know, we were tubing and uh, the, oh, I think it was Dennis Addison. Them and the guy comes in there and you no know, Dennis said, and the guy got is uh, and is in this tube. You know, them willows going out over the deal where they're. Deal, and all of a sudden, Dennis sees this rattlesnake. Goes, "Hey, man, better look out! Why? The rattlesnake about eye level from me. Look, and that somebody's laid up just like an old water snake, mm. but it's a rattlesnake. <laughs> that guy, he cut a backstroke pretty fast, and a little bit later, another guy come up and got on the bank, was taking a piss right next to him. So I never even thought about him uh, climbing trees. But did you see that TikTok video of mine mm. of our pet snake?" No. Yeah, you're going to have to go on there and put it on there. Uh, he's about, oh, shit. We call him Butch. Butch is probably Butch. Se seven foot. Oh, Wilson. I did see this, yes. And, and that song going to climb that tree like it wasn't nothing. Really? Oh, yeah. And he, he had just got through shedding. He shined. He's beauty. And you know you're married to a redneck bitch <laughs> when you come home and your wife has a seven foot bull snake in her hand dragging him out because he got in the laundry room. Let's Oof. get your there ass out no of here. <laughs> fucking way. We, we I had, wouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah, we had a party one day and we're all out there. It's right at sun going down, you know, and we're all standing out there in lawn chairs, bullshit and drinking a beer and all of a sudden Kelly gets up. She walks over there and Butch decided he wanted to make an appearance and she grabs him by the goddamn deal, drags that. Them goddamn women went to fall now. Them goddamn <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'd have been the same way. How long ago did you? Oh, there's Butch right there. Yeah. And then she, I got the great is, is song. Is he pretty? I mean, he's yeah, he's pretty docile. He's oh, used yeah. Used to being he, handled yeah, and everything. He, yeah, you can grab Oh, hell, there my, he goes. Yeah, you can grab that sucker by the tail and he does not give two shit. There he goes. Supposedly right they keep tree. rattlesnakes away. They eat the shit out of them. And that, that's the thing. I very, very seldom see a rattlesnake. And, and what was you know, usually he's about the only one, but this year we've got two more that showed up. I know. Hell, Kelly's reached in there and he'd be in there eating eggs in the in the uh, chicken coop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you get look at him glowing orange. Oh yeah. Oh, he's a big, beautiful son of a gun. Now, amazes me how quickly they can climb them trees though. Well, and if he can get in your laundry room. Other snakes can get in your laundry room. Oh, absolutely. That's why we got Butch on duty. <laughs> he's he's snake patrol. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Kelly's many a time old Butch man her eating an egg. She'll reach in there and grab the eggs and grab him, and yeah, you, she'll move him out of the way. Was she always like that with My snakes? Wife? Yeah. Or did she, like? She's part hillbilly. She grew, <laughs> part she, hillbilly. She, she grew up where her, her dad didn't believe in and uh, buying food. Oh. He killed his food. He growed his food. He was a cowboy. I mean, it was cool. They're putting a place down there at uh, Lake Proctor, the house that her dad's granddad, uh, one of the 1852, they found is a center cut log cabin. And it's still down there. And it's two rooms front rooms, the living room, kitchen area, that, and everybody else slept in the back room. Mm -hmm. And when you woke up in the morning, it had windows. You open the shutters and feed the hogs. You got the <laughs> barrels. Open this shutter, you feed the chickens. Yeah, you, you feed them right there from the house. People had to survive, and they did it. Oh yeah, and that, it's amazing how that some gun. I mean, it's just like it was built yesterday. To you know, them old cedars. You know, you say snakes don't bother you. I'm gonna tell you an old story. Leroy Chaddock told me this years ago. He played at a softball tournament. Leroy was a fireman with my dad. He played in a softball tournament in Jacksboro one time, and a guy he worked with or something liked fish. And Jack and he said, "Yeah, I'm playing softball in Jacksboro this weekend. God, I've always wanted to try that little lake over there. You know, a lake somewhere at Jacksboro." Oh, yeah. So they were said, "Well, hell," he said. I he said, "I tell you what," he said, "We'll go down there and we'll camp out there and we'll fish, and I'll go to town and play softball. When I get done playing softball, I'll come back and we'll fish." And we'll, all right. They put him a little there. There's a little peninsula kind of thing went there, and he said, "Leroy said, man, that'd be a good place. Put their tent. They put their tent. They fishing right there." And Leroy said, "Noticed a few snakes there. You know, not not a bunch, but there was a few snakes there." And he said, "I went and played softball and come back." And he said. We were fishing. That guy's like, God damn, there's sure a lot of snakes here. He said, I've killed four so far, and they're fishing. He said, we're catching fish and shit. He said, i got to go back and play double elimination softball. We're going to get beat probably. So I'll be back. Well, he said, we won one game, and then we won another game, and another game, and another game. He said, next thing I know, it's fucking dark. And i got to go back and got Chris. Oh, say Chris is the guy's name's at the lake. And he said, I'm driving out to the lake. And he said, 
I get about two miles from the lake, and he said, here comes fucking Chris walking down the road, highway, or walking down the county road. He goes, what are you doing? Fucking, you go get that son bitch. I ain't going back there. You go get that crap, blah, blah, blah. He goes, whoa, 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 what's going on? He said, ah, damn it, left me out here for five hours. Blah, blah, blah. The guy's just mad. He goes, what is going on? You're fishing. Snakes. I ain't never seen so many damn <laughs> snakes in my entire life. Leroy said, it, just a few snakes, not that big a deal. He said, I, I'm not staying here. We're going home tonight. I'm going home. Okay, okay, let me go get the tent. There was, I pull up there and he said, I walk in there to get that tent. And he said, I bet there's 50 snakes in that freaking tent. Whoa. He said, there were snakes everywhere. He goes, I guess they stepped on that peninsula. It was a snake I island. Have, I may have to draw a line on that one. <laughs> he said, I'm telling you. He said, the guy crawled in the, the tent. The snakes were trying to get in the tent with him and stuff. You know, it's bad when you start walking to town. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> Leroy said, I ain't never seen so many damn snakes in my entire life. He goes, I don't know what it was about that place, but them snakes wanted that. And he said, they were everywhere. I've always well, said, like, if you knew how many rattlesnakes were actually around you whenever you're oh, out in the woods, like, you'd never go out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, Bucky and them have been killing a bunch lately. But yeah, Bucky, that, since that, this little boy got bit, there ain't, a, there ain't a rattlesnake living on that yeah, ranch their, no more. Their place is uh, snake heaven, too. Yes. Yeah, matter of fact, Two of the biggest snakes I ever heard came from down there. Oh, one on that, uh, oh, what the hell is that ranch right next to Bucky? Stasny there? Cook? Oh, Cross or. I don't I have no idea then. But anyway, they caught a seven. We coyote hunted on this place. God dang, what the hell's the name of that? I thought it was the same, but anyway, Crooked River. Yeah, mm-hmm. Crooked River. They caught like a seven foot eight, you know, one, one, the, uh, Sweetwater, big coyote deal or big. Snake, they got snake, but hell, like you talk about a uh, uh, bunch of snakes. Oh, Dennis Ass and no Jerry Fulford. We got an island out there at, at Lake Kickapoo, about three hundred twenty acre island, right? And we crop fish all over it. And there's a couple of little places. There's a little old cove that goes in there, and that's where we the snake was on the tree. And oh. I, and I thought, man, I'm on one one day I was telling old Dennis, I said, Yeah, you know what I want to do? I said, I want to go out there, take my old C dude and my tubes and just camp out for a whole weekend. He goes, Don't do it. Don't do it. He said, Me and Jerry and Roger Jones and we were all going out there when it got they got a big pontoon boat. We took the one legged Roger Jones. Went, yeah, yeah. And we take the old pontoon boat out there and and I mean the with the lawnmower on it and gonna build us and they mowed them a little old place, mowed them all the deal out there and they put up their tent and said so they went down there, went to crop fishing and so he said, when we come back, everywhere we had mowed, there was a snake laying on that son of a gun. Rattlesnake. rattlesnake. Yep. And he, he said, load up, boys, <laughs> we're going home. He said, we didn't. When, when I was a kid at Lake Kickapoo, did there used to be a Goat Island in? Or yeah. Is that at PK? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Is it's it Goat, Goat Island? That's Goat yeah. Island. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's actually. I'd heard a long time ago there were snakes all over that. Sunday. Yes. Yeah. I got a piss. Some people call it Council. It, it's actually named Council Island, but they call it Goat Island. They used to put a bunch of goats on there, and they used to used to you could lease that island from the city, and they would uh, put cattle on the son of a bitch, mm-hmm. and they would ferry them. They had a uh, a pontoon deal, but they put a, a, a gooseneck top on that son of a gun. And as a matter of fact, I think part of that is still over there on that south side <laughs> of that deal. And, uh, yeah, you know, you can ferry them suckers back and forth. It's like uh, sharks, and you're not an ocean guy, but there's this video of, like, they were like, if you knew how many sharks were just on the other side, like you'd never go back in the water. Look at all those fucking sharks. See, and you know, people are just right. There's yeah. people are swimming right there. Yeah, that's why I do not go. It's like you you were trying to get me to go with y'all. I said, uh, no. Uh, we're safe in Cancun. We're, now, we're safe in Mexico. You know, I went. went Look at not. that. Look at that shit. Yeah. They're right there. Yeah, and they have no clue that they're out and there. And then they are surprised when uh, Uncle Bob. <laughs> what happened to Uncle Bob? I don't know. He was just swimming right here a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can take a hint. Everything in the fucking ocean wants to bite you, eat you, sting you, drown you, rip tides, undercurrent, sharks, jellyfish, <laughs> Portuguese man of war, the, the poisonous snake, everything in there. I can take a fucking hint. Yeah, I'm like... There's nothing out there dies of old age, right? No, used to say. we went to uh, Port St. Lucie uh, when Dawson played in the New York Mets training camp baseball tournament over there. And, of course, 
I look like that old police officer on Jaws. He sits on the <laughs> smoking a cigarette and I'm, get on water, <laughs> get on water, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking for this dorsal fin to come flying around. Just waiting. but I love the water. I'm part fish. I mean, I swim like a fish, and I love the water. And everybody's out there, and I was like, after about five hours of watching everybody, I thought, I'm gonna get in. Yeah, maybe it's all right. So I, <laughs> I get in a little bit. Then I get them goddamn goggles on and go do a little snorkeling. And first rattle out of the fucking box, I get down there and there's a goddamn shark about that long. I kind of like what he was talking about. I, I look like Richard Pryor when he's walking on that water when the piranhas getting his ass. I come out of that summit, out of the water, out of the water. Everybody's in his panic because I'm going out of the water. Man, my little kids out there look like goddamn bobbers. Yeah. What, what happened? We were talking shark. about shark. We were talking about if we knew how many snakes were in the woods, you wouldn't go in the woods. If you know how many sna- sharks were in the water, just out there, you, and then there's drone footage. Everybody's on the beach enjoying the day. Oh, yeah, and the like, sharks are everywhere. There's just sharks yeah. everywhere out there. Circling. See, that's one thing you will never read about in the paper. Clay Reed was killed by a shark attack because I ain't going in it. So you won't get in the ocean? No. I'm not a... I, I ain't water, getting, water I ain't getting in a boat. To get no oh, water doesn't scare me at all. The, no, after I the swim first, like a fish. Well, I know, but even in the ocean, I've never been. I've been. I've swam in the Pacific. I've swam in the Atlantic. Swam all over the place. But when we were in Mexico this year, we were snorkeling at a place, and the water went <clears> to fifteen hundred foot. Called the wall. The wall, He's, and it was six foot deep and clear, and you could see conch yeah, shells and stuff. It, it got like, gradually deeper. Like, where, we, where they first threw us out was probably 10 foot deep, and then, like, it gets, like, 20 foot deep, and then it go. it's like this table yeah. right here. Like, you can see it, and then it's just... And yeah. It's so... It's, Blue. And the water's crystal, crystal clear. I mean, at 100 foot, you can see the bottom. You can't see nothing. It's so fucking deep. You can't well, see the what's insanity down, in that? What's down there below us that's looking up at us? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, that gave me the heebie-jeebies. Have you seen the video of the couple being swallowed by the whale? No. Oh, Google that shit. The kayakers? Yeah. yeah. Before we get there, have you seen this picture? Hey, hey. Those are witches. And they're, eating a witches. De- they're eating dead deer. I'm married it. to one of them sister. <laughs> 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 that one looked like Kelly on the right, my God. But yeah, they... Uh, they, they're this deer carcass there and the owner was like, I wonder what animals are going to come up and eat on that thing. So we set up this camera and he gets this. That, that's the, that's what he got. Oh, damn. Now you're not scared of a grown man in a fight, right? There's not a grown man out there that you're don't want to, that you're not, that you're scared to fight, right? No. Yeah. Even that Fletcher Cox guy, you jump on his ass in a heartbeat, right? Negative. <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> their the bravery days are <laughs> slipping away. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting pretty good at running fast. So you're not the toughest guy in that little area no more. Fletcher no, might be no, it now. No. Okay, but my point is that that there ain't no rage, and you're going to jump out of your truck to talk to them ladies in the middle of the road in dark. You'd be like, what? I the don't fuck? know them naked bitches. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I have fun. I have the nine one one rape call uh, took all fear away from me because them some bitches look like supermodels compared to. But yeah. if you, if you come across that and they're like eating on that deer's foot, I'm not stopping. I'm probably asking for a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> little blood on their mouth. None, of your, bother you. none, none of your friends I, have had a blowjob from a y'all witch. Y'all totally underestimate my freak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that I is don't know. pretty wild though. But they don't. And then like she's right here. I don't. I don't know what she's doing over it. But I'm just wondering why there ain't more boob pictures. Yeah, I don't know. She kept. They it took out up. all the good ones. They huh? took out all the dirty good stuff. bastards. This censorship is going too far. If you can't even watch naked witches, who can you watch? <laughs> okay, what's the one you want to see? Ki- the the kayak and the whale. Yeah, yeah. That. Bl- Did you yeah, see it, Jeff? I, yeah, I showed it to my wife. She didn't want to go on that crew or deal like y'all go. And I said, Yeah, until this happened. She says, Oh my god! Well, you don't have to get on the kayak. We went to Cosmel. You didn't even have to get in the water. Well, if if this motherfucker the would have been on a kayak, they did. Been whale shit. Did you know that the change the subject just for a little bit? But the orca whales have not in history of mankind have never killed a human being. Has never been killed by an orca I've in the wild. A leg off in, a in motherfucker the, on in the orca. wild. In the wild, that's oh. it. Just swallows them whole. Yep. I'm assuming yeah. they the guy here's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> if it got, if it, He's got, I'm getting the hell out of here. Get down. Yeah. Well, if it got a kayak, it'll get Look this little shitty boy. Oh, don't you know him, some bitch? <laughs> 
<laughs> this guy here, though, look at him. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck? He's like, shit. Oh, that we shit. Get down dog <laughs> <laughs> we got to get serious about getting out of here. He goes back to that high octave yeah, scream. <laughs> I would shit you, on. You know they were probably like, oh, look, there's, there, there's, a, there's a whale underneath us. How there gorgeous. There are these people in this kayak. Look at it. It's it's underneath us. It's beautiful. So majestic the way sudden, it's swimming. There it comes. Woof, woof. Mm. God. Anyways, man. orca whales have never in the history of mankind ever well, heard, of, heard a man in public. Before you get, what happened to these people? Did they live? That's not they, an orca they, whale. No, That's I a know, humpback. I know yes, that. Yes, they, they, yeah, they, they did. He spit them out? spit them out, yeah. But... Orca whales now in Spain are attacking boats. And not ain't just Spain. And, it's what, all over. Is it? Yeah. But they don't know what happened. They they think a female whale got somebody on a boat, hit her with something or did something, and she got mad. And ever since then, they think she has gotten these other orcas. Yeah, they're and they're ta- attacking uh, boats now. Yeah, yeah, they're all. It yeah. ain't just over there. Yeah, I watched a, a special <laughs> on it on the other day in the news. Uh, they were all over the daggum world. Orcas. She, but like I say, that was the first movie I ever went and watched. John Orca. Oh, no, Orca. Free Willy? Yeah, it was, uh, had Bo Derek. That was no, Bo, it was Orca. That's it the name was, of the movie. That was the name of the movie. And it was the first movie that Bo Derek ever played in. She had a broken leg, and the Orca ate her leg. And I wanted to eat her. <laughs> pump mouth. That's a good looking old gal. Oh, my God. Especially then. That was about 19. 19- 76. That's when she was doing at, 10. I was at the Grand. No, it was way before then. Yeah, she did the 10. That was like 1980. This is not 1976. Look up Orca. Orca? I think it was 76. Look up Bo Derek. I was, at, I was at the uh, Grand Theater in Electric, Texas. Yeah. That was probably one of the last movies they played over there. Did she? Uh, oh, it's like a is dime. This, is this the movie where she had like the braids or anything? Or no, that's no, 10. That's 10. That was 10? Yeah. Mm. No. I never. Yeah, this is her breakout movie. Her orca. She's got the, she's got the, what'd they call that haircut? Uh, Fucking hot. She was a smoke show. What do they yeah. call that haircut? That's like yep, fair that, faucet. Right up yeah. top there is where she's fixing to fall down. She got the broke leg. See it? Yep. She's fixing to slide down there because he's on the back end of the boat, holding it down, ready for that good looking son of a bitch to come to her. Ooh, God. Now pull up Bo Derek and 10. It's a lot better to look 10? at. Yeah. yeah, it was down there below where a minute ago. Was she a uh, model or did she I was go close, to act? 77. Okay. She was a uh she was married to John Derrick, who was a uh who kind of sexualized her. He was twenty something years older than her he and did put a her good in job movies. Oh, he damn sure did. I wasn't wow. big on the cornrow deal, but I never saw him <laughs> years later. <laughs> Even right there, like when she's in uh that's Tommy Boy. Yeah, like she's a smoke show in she's Tommy 55 Boy. Fifty five years old. Yeah, she's fifty five right. or yeah. Sixty maybe even. Hell yeah. She's a she is a good looking lady. Yeah. Still. Uh, yeah, between her and uh Fair Fawcett back in the day, boy. Mm. I kept now we got I kept calluses on my right hand. <laughs> Now we got the whole Charlie's Liz. Angels. Now we got Lizzo. That's that's who these people look up to today. Who? Liz, you hadn't seen Lizzo? She's beautiful. Dude, if you paid her by the pound, she, if you paid for her sexual favors by the pound, she cost is, you a million bucks. She is the picture of beauty if you, you ask all these You don't know who this chick is? This is the new lady that all the young people think saw it. They, they can have they Lizzo. Her. I'll take Farrah and Bo. Can't call her fat. Can't call her ugly. Can't say she needs to go on a diet. She's beautiful. Clay. That I'm motherfucker gonna, is Third. Clay, if you put that bitch in some yellow sweatsuit, people would fucking she bent over somebody tried to get in. Thing it was a fucking taxi cab. Look that at her. That bitch is she's... bigger than the nine one one break girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's beautiful. Can you imagine that shit though? The guys, the people. Th- I don't. I don't understand I, that. I've seen it firsthand a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have to imagine very, very long. All I can imagine is Sean having that one back, slapping her shame baby, slapping that some bitch on the ass, and that some bitch look like a water bed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I know. I can imagine pretty easy. Bo Derek wasn't that. She was only forty when Tommy Boy was done. She was only forty. Yeah. Born in 56. Tommy Boy came out in 95. So, right so she, she's, she was born in, she, what year was she born? She's 66 years old right now. She was she, born in 56? 56. And so, so she'd have been about 20 when uh, 10 came out. Yeah. 10, I guess it, 1979. And then Tarzan in 81. I forgot better. Tarzan. Tarzan. Well, 
Yeah. The, the, the monkey touched her titty. You got was she, right. was that she was Jane a... and Tarzan? Uh-huh. She's whatever she wanted to be. You got damn right. Orca 77, 10, and uh, 79, Changing of Seasons, Fantasies, Tarzan. Her husband did something else, too, besides sexualize her. He did. A, he was a produced a movie in... Before that, before ten, and I can't I remember what it was. I sexualized her many, <laughs> yeah, many, times. many yeah. times, many, many, many times. times. Uh, repeat offender, man. <laughs> <laughs> they did the same thing with Brooke Shields, though, didn't they? Like she was like fourteen or something. Yeah, that's yeah. she did a, a, she did like, a yeah. that was yeah. Blue Lagoon. That's pedophilia right there. Now that's crazy. Hold on, now. Yeah, I I did some pedophilia to myself over her a lot oh, too. Oh, yeah, damn right. Yeah. But I was the same age back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was against the law. Yeah, it's legal. but yeah, I, I, me and uh, me and Lindy, my daughter, watched that last year. She the was, Blue Lagoon. She's like, "What the fuck?" You know, showing his dick. And she was like, "Dad, this kind of make me uncomfortable." <laughs> I said, yeah, me too, teacher. I, I, Let's I, go. I've never seen that movie. Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon and. Caddyshack in Blazing Saddles was yeah. on cable when we first got it. Oh shit! And and Showtime. Three epic. What was those Wednesday night Showtime the sex shows? Uh, Lady Chatterley. Oh, Lady Chatterley's Lady Lover. Chatterley. And yeah. jokes my folks never told me. Yep. Those was the best oh, stuff my. ever. And then they had Revenge uh, of the HBO, Cheerleaders. They had real, uh, real sex. Real, real sex. sex. Yeah, yeah. Real sex. I, did, I, I was around. For did that. you remember Revenge of the Cheerleaders? Oh, that was no, that was a good HBO or a Showtime. Oh, they used to have one. They used to have Saturday Night Showtime. It was like something, their sex shows. That or Revenge, it uh, Lady Chatterley was. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, 80, 80 was when Blue Lagoon came out. She was born in 65, so she was 15 years old. Yeah. Yeah, she showed. She showed. What else she showed? I've never seen them. Was everything. it just topless or was it everything. full? I think, yeah, I think full full 15 nice. years yeah. old. The Afro Bush Kitty. My God. But I think she I'm was sure. 14 when she was You were right, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, they big deal, but. But but worse than that show was Pretty Baby. Pretty Baby, she's like twelve. Her mom. That was uh yeah, it was a big deal. What was Pretty Baby? Pretty Baby. They were she was uh grew a up model. in a whorehouse. Uh-huh. She grew up in a whorehouse and then she finally they finally finally wind up having sex with her. You know, one of the guys oh, wound right. up buying her. So she's a little I mean seventy eight. Yeah. Pretty no, baby. Yeah, no. And how she's t- twelve years old then? Yeah. yeah. Probably so. No titty, I mean, 12 year old girl, and she's she flat chested anyway. But I mean, it would you cannot watch Pretty Baby without getting uncomfortable. Matter of fact, I don't, I, 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 I mean, bet they don't even show it. I bet you can't even watch it. I anymore. bet you can't either. Because what was the porn star's name? Tracy Lords. Yeah, they found out she was 16 oh, years yeah. old. All the movies they uh-huh. had. Oh, really? Yeah, we have a friend of ours went to prison because of that. What that, but movie? that was oh, uh, I don't, I'm not gonna mention his name. Uh, but but a guy we know went to prison over that because he owned a porn company and they were selling her movies and she was 16 years old. They didn't they didn't fire the people that made the movies. Is a initial J. Yes. C, yeah. 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 So he was selling it. He, he didn't know. A, he owned an online porn company and was selling it. Did he know how old she was? I I I think I they bought him in a bundle. I then. think they bought it in a bundle, but it was a bundle deal, and they were selling it, and they arrested him for having underage uh, pornography. It's kind of fucked up. It kind of is. You can't watch that shit. It's yeah. like that garage sale bullshit. Or I told you about that, didn't I? <laughs> no. <laughs> but we we bought uh, one of our buddies, Jeff Drake. There was four of us. Lit. <laughs> He's gonna take names. <laughs> See we, how I handled mine? <laughs> yeah, we lived in this. Uh, uh, townhome apartment never had electricity in this son bitch <laughs> right. half the time. Yeah, and uh, but anyway, old Jeff happened to be <clears throat> at a garage sale. He comes in one day, kicks on the door. Oh boy, <clears throat> I hit the mother load in a garage sale day. So yeah, he said, yeah, I bought a, a a damn box full of porn and a projector. <laughs> you know the old school <laughs> projector. <laughs> the whole deal. <laughs> Fucking boy, we call it. We, word gets out, we're gonna watch his porn over <laughs> at Clay's house, you know. And everybody in Holiday, Texas comes over there, and I mean, there's a, oh, yeah, we kids their, today don't understand. No, they didn't, we didn't have phones uh, and shit, no. and we barely had you know, this damn near 40 cable, yeah. really. And we we had them, we put the quilts on the table, you know, make it dark, got the old school desk up there. <laughs> we got about 19 goddamn high school boys in this thing of deal. Everybody ready, ready. All right, start it, start it. Boy, we, and it's a pool scene, right? And this guy, he's out there 
doing the pool. <laughs> he's cleaning that pool over there. And I said, all right, show the bitch. And he's wearing like Daisy Dukes, you know, no, Uh-oh, no it's shirt. Gay cord. Yeah, and he was sitting there and he's doing that deal. And we're like, all right, uh, where's the bitches at? <laughs> and then all of a sudden it pans over, goes over here by the diving board. And there's another dude and he's in a lawn chair. <laughs> so now so now all of us are like hey <laughs> we, we're all getting that quiver in our little lip well, uh, well what the fuck are we watching here <laughs> we're all nervous and then all of a sudden there it was that guy's got to bend over the that gum uh dive board running it turn it <laughs> turn it out turn it out but, I mean we're killing each other trying to get that projector turned out and we was like motherfucker <laughs> hey let's make a pack <laughs> just don't leave this fucking room no, right but- here hell yeah and, and did Jeff's going Hey, let's try another one. I said, fuck no. He said, you go burn that motherfucking bike. Well, he, I, he didn't tell me that he had went to the garage sale of a, the guy. His name is Frank, but we call him Queer Frank. I, I won't say his last name. The guy that worked at Kmart? No, no. He had a well service there in holidays. Queer, Queer Frank. And, you remember uh, the guy at Kmart that was sold jewelry and stuff there? Uh-uh. I think that guy's name was Frank, too. God damn it, may have been. But anyway, you this don't go was, to a queer's house and, and get buy a porn. used porn. Right. Yeah. This guy was an older guy that was really like really took care of himself. I mean, he was gay. There's oh, no, no doubt no, about no. it. Okay. That, not this guy. This okay. guy, he was a slum lord. I mean, and and, and he kind of, like one day we were out there uh, on a drilling rig, and uh, oh, queer Frank showed up. Queer Frank. And uh, <laughs> man, me and Jeff Marnie, we're out there wrestling, jacking around. Old Steve Wright, he's up there on the deal. And uh, you know, he said, "Oh, Frank walked up there on the rig floor, and he looked out there, and he's watching us, two shirtless boys, and he's like." Is that old Eddie Marty's boy? <laughs> he's a strapping young buck. Ain't he? Strapping young buck. <laughs> exactly what he told him. He said, he's a strapping young buck right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but even worse story than that is that one time we'd all went out and we got drunk, drunk and shit, you know, and come home. We went over to our buddy's house, and I won't mention his name, <laughs> but he had a queer brother, and uh, and it rhymes with gay. And, uh, but he had his queer brother, but. He wasn't home, and we all got in there. You know, it was about five of us. We all chased pussy all night fighting. And we come to the house. Well, uh, that one buddy of mine had a had a uh, water bed. And, of course, three or four of them had passed out on that water bed. You know, and then I love, thank God, Lord Jesus, I passed out on the couch <laughs> in the living room. Well, <clears throat> next morning we all get up, and we're drunk, hung over as hell. We get in there, and we get the Fruit Loops out, and we're all eating a bowl of cereal on that one old buddy of mine. Mike, he's sitting there, he goes, man, I had a fucked up dream last night. <laughs> and everybody's like, what do you mean? <laughs> man, I had, a, I had a dream somebody was playing with my nuts. <laughs> and, 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 when he, and when he says that, uh, my other buddy across the hill looks up and he goes, I had the same dream. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't, that buddy of mine's butt, brother was coming in there following them so they, while they were passed out. <laughs> I guarantee if, I, if I'd have had a fucking uh, a picture of old so-and-so's face when he, when he said that, <laughs> I had the same fucking dream. Yeah. They ever put two and two yeah, together? Yeah, he just uh, thought it was oh, a good yeah, dream. We knew, yeah, we knew exactly what it was. <laughs> He just thought it was a good dream yeah. until his buddy had the same one. Yeah, yeah they, like I say, that, that buddy of ours bu- brother yeah. wind up dying of AIDS. And, you know. Sebastian, are you going out tonight? No, but no. I hope some people are spending the night with my brother. We got some showtime coming <laughs> over later tonight. I don't have to go out. They come to me. Oh, God. Make sure they get, here's $100 for y'all to drink tonight. Oh. <laughs> so what, what in, in your professional opinion, Jeff, um, oh boy! <laughs> talk- I have we're no from, idea where this is going. From gay straight yeah. to professional opinion. Yeah. If uh, if uh, if a kid has a longtime girlfriend, they're dating. And I- we'll just use me and Jesse for for example. How about that? I'm really kind of confused da- where we're going here, Claire. Dated, you dated, do. dated all off deep end quick. Yeah. Dated all through high school. Uh-huh. Okay. If we were to have taken a video, which we didn't have the capabilities back then, of y'all having sex, of us having sex, and I still had it as an adult, is that child pornography? Even though we're y'all both were adults child? now, are y'all, what, yeah. are you, what are you going to do with it? 
for your own personal use, just you just, and Jesse? It's, it's in the cloud or whatever. Uh, if like you, if it's, it, if it's, it, still, it's still tied to like my account if, or if, something like that. If someone took that from you and stole it from you, you wouldn't be, you would not be in trouble. But if someone, let, let's say I found that and I took it and I sold it and put it on Pornhub or one right. of those places. Yeah, you're promoting I, then I would be, I would be in trouble because Even, Jesse and you were underage. Really? Mm-hmm. So this whole that's Brooke, why but this Tracy, whole Shields that's thing. why the Tracy Lords deal. We'll go to Tracy Lords because she did hardcore porn. Right at and she, sixteen years at old. 16, she was a she might have been fourteen or fifteen. You but nobody her, knew how old you ever she seen her? was. No, look yeah. her up. She's beautiful. She lied. She lied and told him yeah. she was how old she is. But when it, they found out, let's say Vivid, because uh, that's a big porn company, and yeah. I don't know if that's who it was back then. But Vivid Entertainment. He seems to know a lot. Yes, I do. <laughs> Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords. Anyways, let's say it's Vivid. Or whatever the hell one of them companies, Cherry Max, or I don't fucking I don't yeah. know the names, but Vivid is one of the companies. Now he's switching it up like he doesn't know the names. I don't know it. I don't. Know. Vivid, I don't know, whatever. I know. Like that. I know Vivid is a is a. <laughs> yeah, Vivid was the one. Yes, they were they were huge because they're the ones that did the Pam and Tommy deal. Right. So, anyways, that company, let's say, bought all of Tracy's stuff. And they were they were putting it out. Well, they found out she was underage. Before they knew she was underage, I don't think nobody would have gotten in trouble for that. But once they found out underage, then you were distributing child porn. I mean, she was like the porn star. Was she also a regular uh, actress? She yeah, she was on Roseanne. Oh yeah, she was in Crybaby. Yeah, yeah, with Johnny Depp. Okay, I just want to make sure I got the right. Yes, yeah. Lord. yes, yeah, she finally. But when she was a porn star in the early in the eighty, she was a good look, she was good yeah. looking. That's Tracy Lord. Yeah, but you look at the one in the middle in the black. The one right there, that picture, that's more of what we got to see from her. Right. But because, I, I mean, that, that's going to be a problem. It's like, especially with this generation of like high schoolers and shit, they film everything. Yeah. And oh, they're yeah. going to become adults one day that have child pornography. There's been more than a thousand cases already, I can promise you, yeah. of a 17-year-old boy getting a picture from a 15-year-old girl, showing it to his friends at school, yeah. and getting in trouble for possession child pornography. God dang. I mean, a lot of that going on. I mean that's and that's what it is. But it, let's say, like you said, it was okay. Let's say a fifteen-year-old guy's dating a fifteen-year-old girl, and mm -hmm. she sends him naked pictures. Which I got news for you: if you've got a daughter and she's under 16, 15, 16 years of age, seventeen years of age, there's like a ninety percent chance that someone has seen her, her cooter on a picture already. I mean, it's a huge. Clay's like he had daughters. He's <laughs> oh, like, <"Shit." laughs> we talked about this in judging conference one time. The statistics are crazy. How oh, many yeah. girls? You, you can see the judges that had daughters. They're <laughs> yeah. they're, they're going back oh, and looking. Yeah. The ones like me never had daughters. I'm not thinking, oh, yeah, shit. What yeah, and I know what their dads are, and I know what their moms are. So. <laughs> but that the, apple don't far from the tree. No. Apple, I don't want to know nothing. Yeah, I but that's a huge. But it's a huge statistic of the, the oh, percentage yeah. it have. But there are a lot of 15 year old girls that have given a 15 year old boy a picture. Well, if he starts showing people that, he can get in trouble for that. At 15. Yes. He's really? still, it's still child pornography. There's no like age limit, like even well, though he's a child. Well, they're probably not going to do nothing because he's 15 either because he's still a minor also. But if a 17 year old boy, how many juniors in high school are 17 years old here? All of them. How many 15 year old girls have in, at a high school? They're everywhere. And they're fresh. And there's a lot of 15 year old girls. For, there's girls in junior high. Right. I mean, we've had these same problems in all these old towns around here. So, yes, that is an opportunity for someone to get in bad, bad trouble. That, that picture of Tracy Lords on TikTok, the third picture on the bottom, yeah, that's about what she looked like probably in most pornos. And she's a, and she was a good-looking girl at our generation. So, anyway, so somebody got a hold of her videos and was selling it. No, she did porn. I understand that. But he was just selling oh, it he, as he a... was selling. He sold all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. And he, and he didn't know how old she was when she well, made the video. No, 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 no. By then, everybody knew, and oh. they were just selling stuff online. Oh. And got in trouble for that. Because I was I, just, I don't, uh, I couldn't wrap my head around where this guy was at fault. Well, he was sell. He was selling online. The difference between between porn today and and Clay, you can help me here. Porn today, <laughs> bail, everybody, bail out. <laughs> everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got a camera yeah. and stuff. Back then, it was a production. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just like mom and pop were making a porn movie down right. the road. Yeah. I mean, that was a legit. Right. Have you ever seen the show Boogie Nights with hey, Burt Reynolds? They didn't even have camcorders back yeah, then. That's right. Have you seen? Have you seen? <laughs> that, Boogie? that cut the mood all yeah. out. You got to yeah. be like yeah. <laughs> this above her. No, I've never. seen Boogie it. Nights with Burt Reynolds is a good show, yeah. and Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg. Wahlberg plays Dirk, Dirk John Diggler. Holmes, Dirk Diggler, but it's John Holmes right. is who it is. That's a pretty good movie, and that movie shows the difference when they went from. 
Super 8 to VHS or something. Because the old-timey porn guys did not want to switch over to VHS. Yeah. Oh, no, we don't. But then the, the big Shit, money guys. projector bullshit. But the big money guys, like Vivid, that did the potato. That's where the movie was, the VHS. Hey, did you see Pam and Tommy? Uh, the, the series? The series, yeah. No, I didn't watch Did you watch that? Yeah. That's a good series. Yeah. Not, no, not the porn movie, the actual yeah. series. You did yeah. see the series? Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was did good. you know those were fake titties on top of her titties? Uh-huh. What? Uh, yeah, that they they CGI'd the tits on the the the, the actress. What? The, the actress had tits. She had oh, regular size I, tits. I thought you were talking about Pam Anderson. I was like, why why are they CGI'ing her? No, boobs? no, the girl who played Pam Anderson I, in that I show. Gotcha. They CGI'd yes, her yes, tits, right. and they CGI'd his pecker. Right. But yeah, well, you're gonna she wind up getting rid of her tits. Or, or Pam Anderson. Tits. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, anyways, that was the big VHS deal. That's where they made all the money. They were selling them out of the back of the phone, and then that kid decided, "Hey, we could put this on the internet," and boom, it oh, made yeah. all kinds of money. I just wor- I got boys, and I just I worry to death that they're gonna get caught in something like this. Caught in what? Just this whole fucking That's why you thing. You gotta talk a lot. I guess. Don't yeah. give a cell phone. Yeah, I mean, well, that is that'd be the easiest. How about if the guys, you really want to stir up some controversy, listen to this, because I'll stir it up right here. If you don't want teen pregnancies, teach girls to get blowjobs. Or take it in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because but, that, that uh, and apparently one mom is doing this because uh, there's this gal, <laughs> there's this gal in town, and uh, when she was in high school, uh, and I'm not going to be saying that, <laughs> but uh, they were riding around town and they're an archer. And they said, Hey, this gal said, Hey, come on, man. We're calling Max. Hey, Max, let's go. Let's go to the lake and go skinny dip. And of course, old Max like, hell yeah, let's go. So they go down there to the deal. And this girl has got huge, big old titties, beautiful <laughs> old titties. Still to this day, she's got big, but you know, anyway, but and uh, so they go down there and they're skinny dipping, and all of a sudden, the old gal says, that "Looks at old Max, says Max, you want fuck?" And old Max said, "Yep, that's trick, yep, that's a trick question." <laughs> and she, goes, well, we can fuck, but you got to fuck me in the ass because I'm not gonna get pregnant. My mama said, well, "I got to fuck, I got to do it in the ass." Oh my and, god, uh, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so somebody had had the talk. Somebody yeah. had the talk yeah. already. But but seriously, if, if nobody gets pregnant from blowjob, yeah, but or <laughs> anal sex. But uh, honest, and to be all serious, I was just kidding about that teaching your daughters that. But if, and this is a big, a big if, but if these parents would get their girls to not send these pictures, that would make their lives a lot easier. Oh yeah, because it's going to come back later on a deal. But if a 14, 15, 16 year old girl in high school. Sends her boyfriend a picture and she loves him and oh they're Who's not a gonna senior be, and eighteen it, years old. He's gonna be like, Hey, looky here. Yeah. This is what I'm seeing every weekend or whatnot. And you know, he shows it to his buddy. Well, then and, they break up and then you know what he does with that picture? And shows it to somebody else, and somebody else shows it to somebody. And it's happened almost every day. Every in small every town small in America. Town. Yeah. That's right. It happens yeah, all the time. I just had a big <laughs> in a, uh, in an area of town I wanna mention in my area. They just had that big deal come up. We had a little town south of here, remember the cheerleaders? And then one other town, they had a, a suicide over it, you know. The, the, the little town that, that was very good in football a couple years ago, won some state championships. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here. Oh. And they had their cheerleaders. You don't remember don't, that shit? No, oh, yeah. Either. They had a couple of girls from there that it leaked out. And yeah. it was like four or five girls in town, all the big girls, and they all. Right. And they all, it all become, but that happens a lot of times now. Well, that's what happened to led to the suicide of this one girl. Sent it to a boy right. that she liked, and then he sent yep. it to everybody. Blew up. Next thing you know, she's dead. Teenagers yeah. are stupid. I mean, it is. That's why they phones. Like say, that's the trick. Do not let them have them goddamn phone until at least sixteen years old. But well, it would be fun to be a teenager again, wouldn't it, Clay? Oh, fuck! You talking about <laughs> evidence? <laughs> it wouldn't that, be fun. That's like I was. I was down there at, at Georgia, and we were talking and. And of course, I had this guy went with uh, Chris McDonald and Jake. Uh, well, kiss my ass. Forgot his name. Name uh, Jake. Uh, He's probably happy with that. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw it. But but anyway, I was telling them, and they're younger than me. And shit, I was telling them some stories, you know, and like just about like we are. And uh, you know, we had lots of gangbangs back in the day. <laughs> we had 
We were very, very uh, sexually active, oh. and I take that for granted sometimes until I tell a story and I watch some people's face go, oh. <laughs> you what? <laughs> you, uh, is that really happening? Oh, yeah, it really happened. It was cool, too. It was yeah, cool, and, too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so, but if we'd have had fucking cameras oh, back over. then... We'd be all in jail. Every daddy in America would have kicked our ass. <laughs> yeah, because I remember that one party. And this is funnier shit. We're at a party, and that's when they were building Kale, okay. Kale Freeway, you know. And so they had, we're at a house over there by Old Hive that doesn't even have any power in this house, right? And and, uh, and so we got to have some light. We got to have light for a party. There ain't no lights in this no, let's, so we all load up. We go down there to the freeway, Kell Freeway, they're working on, and steal them barriers with them yellow blinking <laughs> lights on. So we, we've got them barriers all through in every room of this house. So it's like a disco. You know, them yellow lights going up, but we had lights. <laughs> and anyway, we're all getting drunk over there, and I'll never forget old Roger Weist. I don't know if you remember him, but old Roger Weist, there was a gal, and I won't, her name was Kim. We'll just leave it at Kim. <laughs> but old Kim was a goody good, I mean, student council president, blah, blah, blah. She you know, upper echelon, probably the first time she ever got drunk. Maybe. Maybe. But, but anyway, she's sitting there. And any other time in her life, she probably would have <laughs> never said hi to Clay. And uh, anyway, we're sitting there. And, and old uh, Roger said, man, I'm going I'm to go talk to her. And this that fucking stuck up bitch ain't gonna say nothing to you <laughs> and she won't even look at you man she's over there you know she's got that real snobby look on her face and she's got her little wine glass drink in it with beer in it she sit there and all of a sudden Ron goes <laughs> he was pretty he was smooth courageous he goes hey Kim you ought to give me some of that pussy <laughs> and she goes <laughs> and I was like good good move there Roger I'll bet that worked okay uh, and I'm like, that fucking worked? And I'm like, are you shit me? And I said, well, if you're going to fuck him, you got to fuck me too. She goes, I'll fuck all of you. I don't care. Well, boy, that was it. We headed all to the back. Bedroom. We all headed to the back. And, and of course, I was the senior tough guy, so I got to go first. And I said, I'm first. And I got up, but, but I guarantee you she had... One in each hand, one in the mouth, and <laughs> it was wild. And the whole time, them yellow blinking lights are going over Flashing. there. And anyway, we all had her way, and it was awesome. She got done. She, Her hair don't look, look nearly as good as when she went into that room. <laughs> she comes out, and that old, you know, we had the big hair days. And, you know, they I'm curious it. to know who Kim they, was, because I know some all Kims. Those Aquanet, you know, and mm -hmm. so when we got done, she, it's going every, every direction. She come in there, and she still got that snobby look on her face. <laughs> and oh, uh, I'll never forget my buddy Randy comes out from the back porch. He's cooking hot dogs on a grill back there, and he comes back there, and he, hey, Kim, you want a wiener? <laughs> no, I've had plenty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This but is, those this could be a Kim from a small town or Kim from a big town. Uh, I'm semi medium town. <laughs> yeah. I know some Kims and I'm trying to think of a Kim that would fit this description. It's and, not my crush Kim. They, you no, know, I knew that, no, 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 I knew that wasn't her. But, uh, I knew that wasn't her. But no, this gal, like I say, she wouldn't uh she would any no other time. That, or I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> and that yeah, I was like, you brought she ain't gonna talk. Was Kim from Henrietta? No. Yeah. You gotta keep digging, Jeff. I will park. She's a little bit she's younger than me. But I wouldn't tell I will you, park. I wouldn't even tell you if you got Burke Burnett. Yeah, you would. No, I would. Also I, here I, you'll well, tell me how okay. we because people could do the math pretty quick. And I, <laughs> That's I, what I'm I, trying to do I too. Hate to throw good pussy under the bus. <laughs> 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 yeah. You can't drive past those blinking lights without yeah. thinking of Kim. Yeah. <laughs> I already gave you Lana McCray's name that one day, so uh <laughs> Yeah, there was some, there was some, uh, but yeah, those were, we were living in the 70s and the 80s. She's probably married to a nice guy now. That ain't shit. no shit. Yeah. She may be a nun. Honey, <laughs> yeah. we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I found that out. Cause but that you know, that it, it been amazed me how easy it was to get laid back in them days. Oh. I mean, it was, I mean, it was, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> That's why, you know, some people ask me, have you ever taken a DNA test? I said, Fuck no. no, not on a dare. I remember one night I come out of there, I come out of Stetson, I am loaded. I have fucked up. I'm going home. 
And this beautiful bitch comes walking in. She's got like a, it's like a scuba, uh, get the scuba zipper right here, but it's only a half top. Fucking giant ass titties on there. Same kind of deal. I pulled that zipper down. I said, I bet those look good. Let's go fuck. We go over there on that goddamn air conditioners over there at the carpet store. <laughs> over there and never seen her before, never seen her since. And that's how those were. How easy it was. Yeah, I was like, man, you could fall into more pussy. And gotta love the thank 80s. Thank God we didn't have <clears throat> phones or hell, we didn't even have camcorders. You think then. there's clubs like Cheyenne that are still there now in big towns? <laughs> I'd like to think so. I don't think it would be a is. shame not to be. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah, because uh, we had a lot of fun. Even though I, 99% of the time, I was kicked out in the first 30 minutes. But how, how old were you? Were you in your early 20s? You were legal drinking age? 19. Yeah, you know, 18 to 23, yeah. 24 years old. Yeah. You, you can't imagine what this club was like because I just don't think they have things like that. But we didn't have cell phones, and that was where everybody went to socialize and stuff. And I think there probably there were 600 people allowed in there. Was drinking age 21 back then? Yes, 21. But... They had it nights was that you 19. Could, yeah. Right before I was 18, they uh, you know, it was 19. Then when right. I turned 19, they turned 21. There was I a, was a goddamn man. <laughs> you moved the goalpost yeah. on you twice. Yeah, but there was people I knew that were in high school that 18 years old, it went to 19. And when they turned 19, it went to 20. So there's some people that yeah, were legal was three. Clay. No, was Clay a, wasn't either. It was yeah. before us. No, we were younger than that. It was, we were, I was it was 18. 21. I can remember how, when I, how old right are you right now? I 58. I turned 18, they turned 19. You're 58? Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't realize. Seven. Okay, yeah, yeah, you were you were that age yeah, thing because yeah. there's a couple of years, but yeah, like the kids when I was a freshman in high school, the kids that were seniors, they had three years in a row of it. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that yeah. Was eighteen, nineteen, and twenty-one. Like, Motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm at the goal it's post. It's a plot against me, <laughs> goddamn it. Well, um, Never gonna get to drink illegal beer. Anyways, the the place we went to, Cheyenne, was a, you could get in and be eighteen on like Thursday night or Sunday night. They had same different stardust. They, yeah, yeah, same, same deal. Night. Teen night, teen which was an example for twenty five year old girl guys to meet fifteen year old girls. Basically, yeah. sixteen is what it was. To eighteen, you got a bracelet and uh, you could get in, but you couldn't drink. Drink till right. you're twenty one. What do you think is going to happen in a situation like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's but where, where where everybody's going? Yeah, but those Let me give her but, a beer. But Cheyenne, where we would go to, the, you had to be eighteen to get in there. But that place was 600 people, but it was 600 people. They had a tan line contest. They had a sexy shadow box contest. Three-time macho chess contest winner. <laughs> they had all kinds of shit. But, but all it was was just, it was fun. It was a, it was a, if you were a single was person, party. it was a damn good time. Had that silhouette contest. Yeah, silhouette contest. Silhouette. That's what I was thinking about, yeah. What is they it, got like a sheet? Yes. They had you behind a, yeah, a deal, and you got a, basically you stripped up there and behind a screen. Do you remember it. the, uh. The homemade bikini contest. Homemade bikini. One girl, and I'm not gonna say her name. She's from Holiday. Good looking sub bitch. That. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> she wore peanut butter. Yeah, that's all she had on was peanut butter. Really? Yeah, that's it. And that was a normal. That was a normal <laughs> in the you. summer on a Thursday night. It was normal. So everybody that was of 18 years of old to the one dude wore a banana peel yeah. with <laughs> duct tape around his neck. You know. Price Pruitt, <laughs> Chance's brother, or a fucking uh, a funnel for a car. That's all he had on was a funnel. So that's but, probably where the whipped cream but, bikini came but, from in Varsity Blues. But, somebody was at Cheyenne yeah. and oh, just yeah. turned oh, yeah. peanut butter to whipped cream. Oh, Price, though, he didn't give two shits. He got in trouble at Lake Murray for water skiing naked. And then he played golf at Iron Horse in Arlington and with no clothes on was playing golf. And they got a mental offender is what they call yeah. that. <laughs> he just thought it was funny as shit. Oh, fuck. But, but yeah, the, the girl just wearing peanut butter. How old was she? 19, 20. Jeez. And good looking, too. But just peanut butter. I mean, <laughs> you imagine, and then you see her, you know, and then her, Wichita Falls is a big town, but it's not yeah. a big town. It's a, so. You know everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm, where I was working at the end was all the guys older than me. They were 10 years older than me, but I'd tell them what was going on. And I'm, that's Jim Bob's daughter. We know him, you know, and shit. I, I guess that's why it was such a shock for me to go to Georgia, you know, to not see, you know, we take for Kids granted all the good looking bitches we go. I go over there. I will say this, uh, Chris's old lady was hot. Yeah, that, that thing, and she cooked a mean steak and some uh, good deal. But th she was the only hot. So woman in the whole state of Georgia, state you did not see Georgia. a hot woman. And Chris McDonald's got her hunt hemmed up up there. That son of a gun. Because <laughs> I would figure that in Georgia, I would I would rank them in the top ten. Yeah, in the United right States with hot women. And you know, and it wasn't like I was staying there on the farm. You know, I right. went to I went to Thomasville and and uh, I went to in the balls. I went all all around and I was kind. I was like, what the fuck? Goddamn! I mean, there was a, a herd of sixes, and, and but 
uh, like I say, I I have a buddy of mine that played pro baseball, and I asked him about where the hottest women were, and he Texas, of course. But he said that New York City. When we were in New York this time, there are a lot of pretty ladies in New York, but I don't think they're New Yorkers. I think they're people from all over that are right. coming there. You know, I don't know how many of them are from New York. Right. But why well, wouldn't want to be in New York right now? Ooh. Motherfucker. They canceled flights seen, into LaGuardia. Have you seen what it looks like in New York right now? Have you Smoke. seen the, Have you seen the deal? I've seen a TikTok, and yeah. I don't, you know, you can't believe anything on fucking That's true. deal. But they got these, all the deal up there in Canada, you know, talking about all these fires. See them all start up at the same time. Yeah, but they got these people in them places that there ain't a, there ain't none of that. What do you mean? All so you're saying it's a conspiracy? Time, yeah, there ain't no fires. That's what they're saying. Well, I yeah, saw it on. Going, like, here, here's this, here's this, here's this. All the people in Canada taking the bills. Hey, they keep saying we're under fire and we've got a health deal. Really? Yeah, you can probably find it on that TikTok. And there ain't none. Look at the look at the radar right he now. He said, don't, and, it, it, you know, the deal is don't believe everything you're reading. Well, it's coming from somewhere because LaGuardia Airport is yeah, shut down exactly. in New York. And I saw pictures today because Michelle was like it. So I, I put it. I clicked on some you live know, that, cams. That one town is supposed to be evacuated. Here we are in so and so, but we're supposed to be evacuated. Really? And, and there's a whole series of all these videos from all these different towns. See, I've seen the radar of uh, all the fires starting up. I saw that. And they all start. All at the same time. All at the same time. <laughs> 25 fires or whatever. Well, well like I said, every one of them starts. No, the y'all time. got to watch them. The, the, this morning I woke up to the wildest. They had a UFO crash in Vegas. I saw that. And then had the eight to ten foot creatures in the guy's backyard neighborhood. I didn't see that All part. All the people I just, with the I, big eyes. Yeah, listen to the uh, uh, 911 call. What's co- all this shit's coming to fruition at once. They're yeah. fixing to try to cover up something massive. Yeah. It's, That's what's got. There's got to be some reason that all of a sudden the they're releasing all. the helicopters coming out of California. All the planes. and I mean, like hundreds of them. Is this it? But like I say, you can't. Yeah. That's wild. Uh. And the police got <clears throat> police cams got the deal coming out of the sky. There it is. An eight foot person. <laughs> it's more than an hour after that bright light. Officers meeting up with the caller and his family. What did you see? It was like a, it was like a big Bigfoot. A big creature? Yeah, they don't catch you drunk. I'm not going to BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall on the sky, too. So that's yeah. why I'm kind of curious. Oh. Did you see anything in your backyard? Or? They see like a big, that's what they say. They see like a big, uh, like a big something with light. When I saw it now, I didn't believe it. Now, police walk into the backyard to investigate, but Metro blacked out that because it's considered private property. Mm-hmm, because they fucking found something, is why. Hey, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? Asking others what they saw. Uh, I'm normally just telling there's nothing. However, um, <laughs> seeing as one of my partners said they saw it too, only reason I'm actually investigating further. That investigation what the fuck? Yeah, they got it on camera. <coughs> You got to figure that that's on like a um, a backyard. Everybody's ring, ring doorbell, ring video doorbell or something. Well, I'm gonna tell you this: if a motherfucking alien lands in my backyard and it's ten foot tall, yeah. there Shoot ain't it. gonna be no nine one one call because I'm gonna be in the eight oh six area code somewhere. I am leaving <laughs> the fuck out. You went, Snakes went, I can deal <clears throat> with, Sasquatch I'm cool with, but them goddamn ten foot tall goddamn Especially creature. ten foot tall. Like it's one thing if it's like those thigh high bastards, you know, with the big heads. Yeah. I might ten. square off with one of them. Hey, he's a cute little guy. Yeah, <laughs> one that has to duck getting into that door right there. Have you uh we have a different conversation? Thirty years ago, thirty five years ago, I was on a camping trip up north <clears> in the Boundary <throat> Waters <clears throat> and I was with two guys that were in the CIA. And I knew that's what they did. And this would have been when Bill Clinton was president. And one of them, they start talking about stuff. We were watching this guy that we had the Northern Lights come out one night. It was pretty interesting, the Northern Lights, when we were visiting and shit. And one guy, he said, he, to, he told me, he said, you know, he said, I'm going to be honest with you, Jeff. We're t-. I said, why, is there a bunch of shit out there we don't know about? He said, I'm going to tell you right now. 
He said, a lot of these people that are on these milk cartons, because remember when they said missing people on the milk oh, cartons? Yeah. He goes, they're not missing. He said, they've been abducted. abducted. Yeah. And he goes, I'm telling you, Bill Clinton had signed some law in that he de- declassified a bunch of UFO shit. Yeah. But you had to have a top secret clearance, and you had to be where they were at to see them. Well, this guy was a company man and worked at a place that was was a front for the CIA. They said, defense contractor. And he read this stuff, and he told me, he said, I wish I'd have never read it. He said, it scared the shit out of me. He said, just had a kid. He said, this really scares me. Yeah. And he said, you know, there's there's shit. Have you not ever been driving by yourself in the middle of the night and not felt like you were being watched? Ever? Oh, yeah. That's a fucking creepy place. And there ain't a fucking or creepy place. hunting out there in the middle yes. of the night. <laughs> middle of Between Wichita Falls and Lubbock, Texas, there is Seymour, Texas, and there is Benjamin, Texas. And that's it. Yeah. So if my wife goes somewhere to try, if she's going shopping or something, I'd prefer her to go to Abilene because you got between Abilene and Knox City, there's five or six places. Yeah. Between Wichita Falls and and, and Knox City, you, you got, got Mundy and Seymour. And that's it. If you're going to Lubbock, you ain't got shit. You got Crosby. To, when you get 20 miles outside of fucking Lubbock, you got two hours. Didn't y'all's vehicle get your with your grandparents get a window blown out one time by a gun? Yeah, we were coming back from a tech game. And we're just on the highway, and that back window just goes. Poof. No, I don't know what the fuck happened. Well, that that happened bitch this year. Shattered, just yeah. shattered. I had that happened. Uh, I was on First Road West <laughs> Holiday in my pasture, coming down the dirt road, just very slow. You know, five minutes. I'm in my pasture calling my cows, and all of a sudden, boom! My goddamn butt back window busted. You can see the damn gun bullet hole. Right oh, in the really? back end of that son gun, but I've got that tent all right. over it. And so it all held together except right there where that dang bullet was, right behind my Who head. Who tried to kill you? I, I don't know, but it. Do they, you think it was just an accidental? I have no idea what the hell it That's was. That's kind of scary, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, it's the definite bullet hole, you could tell. I know. But how did it. I don't know how it didn't right. hit me, or it, maybe somebody shot from two miles and it just lost enough deal because there ain't nobody to shoot around there, there in the upper midwest in <clears throat> south dakota north dakota I can't remember town i have a group of guys that hunt with me and they had a small town banker that fucks people over and he was going home from work one day and somebody shot his windows out of his car and called the cops and sheriff so hey, it was probably just an accident well about two weeks later it happened again the motherfucker got his shit and moved somebody so tried was to give funny him a fucking story my Come, window and so, I, so now I got to get a back glass put in it. So I go over to this glass company over there, Dog Pat, and uh, they go, what happened to your window? I said, oh, shit, you know, I live out there in the country, you know, and everybody thinks we got all these Indians whooped, but they're still out there. <laughs> and uh, they took a shot at me. They missed, but, you know, it's still there. Well, then, so they fix it. Week and a half later, I'm over there at a coyote hunting. You know, it's the middle of my coyote deal last year, and I – wind up setting my gun on the toolbox of my deal and I bump that trigger Ooh. and that circle goes off. Boom! Shoots out my black glass again. <laughs> but then it shoots Damn inside it. my door. Barely misses my driver's side window, but it sure had shrapnel. Now, motherfucker. So, <laughs> I, go, I go back over there and they go, no fucking way. I said, yeah. Yeah, they're getting closer this time. They're getting closer. That old, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then it's about a month later, me and Kelly, we wind up uh, renting a car going to uh, uh, North Carolina to that deal. And I ain't God dang got barely the buoy. And God dang uh, gravel truck kicks up rock bus that window and I take it back Cause this is getting fucking ridiculous. Now. <laughs> just, this is from the front now. She is, you know, well, they got to take it different, and I can't get my from the back. This is getting yeah. ridiculous now. Yeah, I paid the light bill at the other glass deal over there on Thirty Third Street. Yeah, no dog patch don't look the same as it used to. Now they've cleaned it up a lot. Oh yeah, it, yeah. It, I wouldn't say they cleaned it up a lot. <laughs> I drove the other day down Old yeah. Jacksboro Highway. First time, um, my mom, we're moving my mom out here, and me and Michelle took my mom to her house and got some stuff cleaned up, and then we went to took her to the doctor. And anyways, I ended up going down Old Jacksboro Highway. I hadn't been down there in years, and I drove down there, and I thought, that looks good. Oh, Youngbloods is still there, though. I'll bet you, I'll bet you before it's over, though, I'll bet you a bunch of them old houses are going to fix and get bought with that new high school coming up. 
Yeah, I bet you that that's like old Lance. He's over there counting his money. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like five acres right across the street and the entrance to that some of his guns right there. So he's like hoping he can cash out and go buy him a lake cabin out by me. Fucking traffic where those schools are is going to be a bit. It's, it's going to be <clears throat> stupid, stupid. 7.30 to 8 o'clock in the morning and then 3.30 to about 4. It's going to be a the, motherfucker. The road already the going between Holiday and Wichita is terrible. Yeah. And now they got it at 50 fucking miles an hour. Yeah. And nobody goes fifty. No, no. Yeah. and and you can't. You know what sucks is is for me. That's the way I go to the casino. So we, at least once a week we go that way. Well, fuck from holiday, you can drive 70, 80 miles an hour all the way to holiday. When you get to holiday, you got to kick it down to sixty five because it's sixty miles an hour. Now it's fifty. Yeah. If I could, once I get to uh, Southwest Parkway, I can take left and cut back towards the prison three sixty nine. It's quicker because yeah. you don't have to go through all that sixty the motorcycle trap. Right. But fifty fucking miles an hour. There's no way to go around it. No. It's stupid. That's that's slow. Now they're trying to expand that road right there. I think yep. they're going to make it. Uh, trying to put a turn lane in between them. That's dangerous. I'm surprised there's not you more head-on collisions. You know where that yellow light is? By Dollar General. Yeah. Yes. They need to make that a red light. Yes, they do. They, they got to make. But they that. can't do it because of some stupid law that you cannot have a red light on a thoroughfare interstate like that because that's a U.S. highway. <laughs> because it goes from Wichita Falls to Abilene. But if you think about it, there's none. See, when they when they it did Monday, they, they bypassed all these fucking towns. But they should be able to do it because there's a red light in Anson, Texas. Mm-hmm. But, and, and Anson's on that same road. But they yeah, bi- I think so. Hey, hell, but they bypassed around, Stanford. Around Benbrook and all them yeah. deals. I mean, hell, they got red lights. Right, but but Haskell and Monday both got bypassed when they yep. put the interstate, went, uh, the, went around them. Somebody in Stanford or in Anson's got some big fucking pockets because they didn't get sidestep like everybody else did. Yeah. Holly, the whole way, all the way to fucking Abilene, that's it. But there's there's only one red light between Abilene and Wichita Falls, and it's in Anson. But that's what I was told is why they couldn't have a red. But it does need, there's been a lot of bad wrecks right there. Oh, terrible. And I feel sorry for them firemen when they get a call having to come out on that road right there. Oh, yeah. yeah how the hell do they big ass their way into that? Just, they just fucking goose I would it? hate to be a, a, a a father with kid going to school at Ryder or even holiday that has to pull out there yeah. or come back in on Turkey Ranch Road. It's terrible. Yeah, I mean, it would scare me to death because then nobody goes 50. And then the ones that go 50 uh, create a hazard with somebody the else. Going not. 75. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Both of those schools are in bad traffic areas. The one on Winthorst Road. That's a, you, it's, it's a fucked up way to get on the exit there. I'm assuming they're going to have an entrance come in probably by the clinic and that fire department that way, the back way up to the school. That's probably what I would do to try to relieve that. Path. But can you imagine all them people at the clinic having 1,800 kids driving in there every day? Oh, it's going to be stupid, stupid. And then the one on. Think about that. You know yeah. what? Have you, have you been by there? You know, Hardy Gage is it's, the deal. It's, I don't, it's I don't a bad, why, bad, bad subject in my household. I don't know why they did. Why didn't they turn that barn, barn down? I've wondered about that also. <laughs> Tore everything else around there, and then they left that barn, right? But maybe that's where the ag department's going to be at. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that didn't make no sense. No, it does not. That's, you know, i seen a cool deal back. You, you, you remember that uh, cartoon Up? Yes. To where they yeah, had the house the in the middle of all the, yeah. all the house. There's an actual house like that. And I can't remember where it was. You can probably Google it. But they, this lady, she refused to sell. So they, this guy builds this skyscraper. They offered millions for this house, and she turned them down. And it's just a little bitty old quaint house, just about like in that movie Up. <coughs> well, the uh, contractor, architecture for this deal that kept trying to buy the house, he befriended this old lady. And they finally wind up building this house around uh, these skyscrapers around that house. And, uh, well, this guy become real good friends with her. And when her husband died, he kind of become the caretaker for that old lady that wouldn't sell. And they become great friends. And he took care of her until the day she died. And then she willed that place to him. And he never, it's still the same. Where's it at? Uh, I'm reading about it. That's it. But she turned down a million dollar offer, North Carolina, Seattle. Oh, in Seattle, yeah. You know, um, if you if you go on the main strip in Las Vegas, there's a place called the Polo Casino. I think it was Polo, and it's right next to. That e- don't look like it though. Yeah, because it. it's showing the up deal right there. But it's the MGM. No, I'm just using oh, that example. Oh, but- the MGM built all that new area and city center and all that stuff. 
and it's right next to this this thing that was Polo Towers, I think is what it's called. Like me and Hutch played twenty one in there one right. night. But it's like five stories tall. Well, it was it was condos and people owned on the strip and they bought into it in the seventies and stuff. Well, a couple of people wouldn't sell. They got offered big money by by um, MGM and Andy pull up that if you can the Polo Towers on the Las Vegas Strip and that's the way it is that city center and area built all around that some bitch and you got this thing from 1974 in the middle of it not no, very I mean, big but just because one or two of the owners wouldn't sell out Polo Towers I think it's called the Polo Towers uh I don't think so that's the Polo Towers that 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 is it right that's it right there. And what, what, what it's, if you look from a uh, well, they're, they're giving themselves a good picture of it. <laughs> that, that's not what it looks like. No, but that that is it. But if you look at it next to the MGM, is built all around it. Uh, I see. They've probably have done. They may have sold it by now. Done some stuff to it, but it was all it was all surrounded by everything else. Oh uh, man, Hutch said he didn't remember the Bigfoot one. Well, I asked him about it. When he he said he was asleep, he said you and you and Mitch are crazy. He's full of shit. <laughs> he said he was sleeping. He yeah. was not sleeping. He was up in the rack with Mitch. He was ready to get out, huh? Yeah, <clears throat> he might have been sleeping in the rack. Well, we all three was ready to get out. We <laughs> couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Yeah, he said. Yeah, he he said he doesn't remember it like y'all do. You think it would be fun to set him and Mitch up with get a hologram or something like that or something up in the middle of nowhere? Which one of them would falter first and be scared first? Uh, I ain't no telling. I ain't gonna throw any of them under the bus because they'll throw me under the bus next time. Uh, yeah, I think Wayne's retired from doing any of that stuff. Oh hell yeah! We, I, I damn near had him you talked were- in. Him and Mitch both were gonna hunt one hunt. You know, one hunt, and we'd go till midnight. But, yeah, but no, their vagina started hanging out. They you were, ruined them. I don't know. Y'all went too hard. Yeah. Hutch, you know, he's... No, the younger guy's hunting with you now, though? Uh-huh. Ty hunts with you some, don't he? Yeah, he, well, he hunted last year, or year before last. And, Is uh, James doing any varmint hunting anymore? Uh, Yeah, he hunts with... Now, he, yeah, that's their crew. You got Holt, Holt, James, Hagen, and and uh, Ty. They're kind of diehards. And Hagen, probably the least. He's, he's, Golfer. He, he's still chasing wild women. Yeah. And I God bless him. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's the been, last he one. Of the, he's the, the last one. He's long. He's like, hey, old Clay's got some good stories. Let's <laughs> live up. But uh, no, they're they're hardcore. But no, I I got old. Like say, Mitch quit me or Hutch quit, and then we picked up Lynn Schrader, uh, my buddy. He's he's younger than me. Like he's probably forty seven, and uh, he's die hard too. There's yeah. a lot of things that I want to do and would like to be invited to, but hunting coyotes all night long, not one of them. I'm not into the 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 coyote hunting deal. It's cool and all that. I'm into competing. I am, you know, can't play softball. Can't I can't run races. You don't want to lose. I I want yeah. When there, I like that competing part. There's a prize at the end. I like to be the guy on the top of the podium. That's the com. <laughs> The, I have that competitive gene that I want to be competing, and that's what keeps me going. Just like Marvin Henry. Marvin, he was 78 years old. He's still out there running them woods with us and smoking them cigarettes <laughs> left and right. And he would, he would, his greatest fear in life was to get beat by me. <laughs> and, and me, likewise, to him. Because we were like son and dad. We you, you need that, though, in life. Exactly. And that's what keeps me going. Well, I seen a quote a while ago when I come up here. He said, I'd rather wear out than rust out. And yeah. that ain't no shit. How, do you think, this this way I think, I'm, I'm a couple years younger than you, but I believe most men our age are not happy with what their life has given them. Not oh, all of them. Without a doubt. But most of them have got a ton of regrets. Yeah. I can honestly say if I died of going home today, I've had a really good freaking life. Oh, absolutely. I have not, yeah. And have done a lot of things, and I've got a lot of memories. You know, which I know a lot of guys that got a whole lot of money in the bank, but have not done shit at all. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden they're going to wake up and they're going to be sick and old and they can't do nothing. That's, that's my fear. Yeah. That's, and, I don't want to wake up and I can't go. I mean, I'm old, like where my hips will hurt sometimes mm-hmm. or something. And I'm wake up, I'm like, God dang. But I don't have, the, I don't wake up and think, God, you're old. You can't do shit no more. Yeah. And I got lots of friends of mine that just, my biggest, but I got a, well, I got one buddy that all the time. He'll be like, man, that looked like y'all had a good time. I said, why don't you go? I just, I can't really afford it. 
How much fucking money do you need in the bank? That's fucking go me. do shit. I can't afford to go to fucking Georgia and on that deal, but I, I can't afford not to because yeah. it helps my sanity. Yes, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, you need to go do something. Well, my wife will kill me. No, she won't. Yeah. You know, let her go do something she wants to do. Yep. I mean, that's, you got to fucking, you got to live. How about you? You're a younger age. How many of the people that are your age wish they did more in their life? <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, Henry David Thoreau, he, he has a quote. He said, most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of truth to that. True Everybody story. just gets on that hamster wheel and they're just praying for the day that it all comes to an end. I mean, it's sad because that's what they were. I mean, especially like your generation, your guys' generation, like you were taught become a good worker, get a good job retire and then play with whatever time you got left. You never, you never, they didn't grow up around Ron Stanfield. No. Yeah. That's what you were taught in school. That was, yeah, well, that right, was everybody's but, goal. But my, my person in my life that I saw basically get to do what they want is my dad. And do mm-hmm. you think dad died a happy man? Yes. Other than dying, he was happy yeah, as hell. Dying kind of, but did dad enjoy, but you, the whole time, but I didn't dad, know, I didn't know him when he was a fireman though. He I was don't know. ready to get the fuck out of being a fireman so he could do what he wanted to but do. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that that's the same thing. But but you're right. But but you you see what I'm saying. My my the person that I was that that raised me was someone that did basically what he wanted to do his whole life. He used to be drinking and training dogs. He quit drinking, so they yeah. just trained dogs and hunt. But he surrounded himself doing things he liked to do. Money was not a big thing to my dad. That's the deal. Too many put, people put too much emphasis on material things and that money. Yeah. And it's like that quote I put on Facebook the other day: "You can always make more money, but you can't always make more memory." Yep. And that that yeah, uh, you're you get your ticket punched pretty quick, and there ain't no well. Wait a minute, I wanted to go do this. I wanted to go do that. It's too late. That, yeah. And me and you, we're past that old fifty age where that ticket can come up at any moment, any day. And I and I well, and not just that. Like your your time of physically being able to do things like that. that that's what coming. I. That's like what you I might told live. You I, might live to your age. I may have been on here when I turned fifty. Yeah, I knew that I had about ten, maybe fifteen at most, good summers to where I could physically go do shit, right. and I'm not going to waste one of them motherfuckers. We had, we had a guy yeah. sitting in that same chair here two weeks ago or last week, Lewis Henderson, a good friend of mine, and yeah. I think you've met Lewis yeah, before. I know Lewis. Yeah. L- Lewis, a great guy. Lewis has gone and done stuff. He worked hard, but Lewis has yep. played and did what he wanted to do for the last thirty or forty years. Well, I asked him off off the deal. We were talking about something, and we were talking about going somewhere. And he goes all the time. He listens to podcasts all the time. They go to Venice and go fishing three or four times a year. But he told me physically, he said, I can't do what I could do 10 years ago. When you get over 70, I know Steve Barber told me this the other day. He said, when you get over 70, he goes, fucking, you get old fast. Yeah. You know, you, and it's true. And I've always told people, there, there, you, there, there's a lot of guys that are 69 years old that you can't tell the difference between them being 55 if they're 69. Yeah. And there's guys that are 55 years old. You can't tell they're 45. Like your, your story you told about the, what the guy tell the girl about being an age? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what was it? You, you, uh, you're not 55. You're 45. He goes, yeah, but I don't look good for 55. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. But, but once you hit over 70, uh-huh. there's not very many people that are over 70 that you're like, damn. That yeah, sucker's getting, just, he's getting younger. Every time I see him, he looks better. Yeah, you don't yeah. do it. He's just going and going. Yeah. He's just doing it. Yeah. yeah, that's my that's my greatest fear. I don't want to I don't want to ever slow down because the caboose will wind up hitting me in the ass. I had, and, uh, yeah. I, I had a guy 88 years old in the office last year, and we were talking about this thing basically kind of shit. And he's like, Yeah, he said, I need to get my little brother to come out here. So my little brother's 86. And he goes, he tells me all the time he can't afford to come hunting. I just can't afford that yet. And one day I'm going to. He's like, how many fucking days you think you got left? You're 86 years old. And he goes, you live on a fixed income, but you still save 15% of everything you make. What the fuck are you saving it for? You know? He goes, he's got two kids. They're both six. I think they were both doctors. He said, they don't need his money that he's got left. Go spend what you have. Go enjoy your life. You know? It's That's not one like- thing about it. They ain't got to worry about me. My greatest fear in life is getting hit by a car with... Five dollars still left in my pocket. <laughs> God damn it! I knew I should have spent that shit. Damn it! It drives my wife batshit crazy. Yeah. But, but but I got a four thousand dollar bike. I'll sell you right now. <laughs> but you know people just like that. Yeah, every absolutely. day. And some of my wealthiest friends don't do nothing. Mm-hmm. And I just yeah. And some of the wealthiest people in my city that I live in don't ever go do nothing. Yeah. And they're getting older. One guy has got a lot of money, and he's getting older and older and older and older and is getting old fast. It has hit him like a train. 
go fucking do something before you fucking can't do shit at all. But how do you, you can't break, it's hard to break that mentality. You though. can't, there, there, like there's they, nothing you they, do. They're that's 70 years it. old where they were like, Oh no, I gotta, I gotta save and I gotta do this. And it's like, it'd be like fucking, it'd be a total shift they in their mindset. That, they get that truck in a rut. Yeah. Yep. And that rut gets deeper and deeper. The longer you stay in, it's just like you said, that old hamster wheel. Yep. Too many people get used to just going around and around and around. And I'm going to tell you a reality check for a lot of people. And I had it, we've had it with my mom. My mom is moving to Knox County and we're moving her from Wichita and we're going to get her an apartment here. Right. And a, 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 10 days ago, she needed to probably go to a nursing home. She's better now. And so she can be on her own and she can live on her own and she'll be okay. But, but the reality is if my mom had to go in a nursing home right now, every dime that she has saved to make sure that me and Tony get yeah. something when we get over this, the, the, the nursing home is going to get every yep. penny of it. And, and all these people that are saving something happens to them and they got to stick them in an assisted or convalescent center or something. Uh, all their money is going to go right to that convalescent center. And then after they run out of that money, then they'll put them on Medicaid or Medicare. So all you're doing is most, if you just die, then you're going to leave love. Cause I told my mom that I said, now you're going to have to do something with your money, mom, or they're going to, they're going to get all of it. Well, you and Tony will get it all or my grandkids. I go, no, they won't. I said, if you get sick and we have to put you in something like that, they're going to get all that money. Well, what if I just die? I said, well, yeah, if you die, it will be, but you don't know how it works. I said, that yeah. nursing home is full of people that worked hard and saved money, that have zero money. Their kids got zero money because the nursing home gets every bit of it. You never know when it's going to hit you. Why don't you go to the hotel? The hotel. That's what everybody's doing now. That's yeah, cheaper. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Wow. Holiday Inn Express really? is yeah. cheaper. That and cruises. Go on yeah. cruises, these people. Yeah. I watched a story on I these white guys. They, they, him and his wife, they're retired, you know, and they can go need to go home. But they go when it's winter time. They go to Florida and they stay at a, a, a Hilton up there. And you know they've got they got a breakfast in the morning. You know they got computer. They got exercise. They got pool. They got uh, they do their laundry for them. You know, all right. And then when it gets and they never get tired of staying in the same place. Right. You know, when you get to group rate, monthly rates, it's even half. It was so they half. got all these old people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a new thing. And now, now that, and now when it gets summertime, they head north, so they don't have to deal with the heat. And they, they're always at a new place. You know, they're going. My mom to go in a nursing home, not an expensive nursing home. Yeah. It's three hundred dollars a day. Yeah. That's, That's nine thousand yeah. fucking dollars a month. Nine thousand a month, or you go for a Holiday Inn Express for probably about a hundred dollars a yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. So you can stay for three thousand. No, it's less than that. Hell, that one guy was it? 60? If you get a monthly rate, it was like fifty-five dollars. Okay, there you go. So, so you're fifty-five dollars 15... a day. You get meal. You get one you get one breakfast. meal provided. Yeah, you yep. get a breakfast, laundry, exercise, yeah. fifteen hundred a month. Somebody comes and cleans your room yeah, for exactly. you. Yep. Fifteen hundred, and then they spend all the rest of their money. They can go fishing at the pier. You know, hey, we're gonna go to Myrtle Beach and stay in this. For a month, and somebody. I was like, "Well, that makes fucking good sense." Somebody I'm taking notes, my Eight, figured out a lot eighteen thousand dollars a year to stay at a Holiday Inn Express yeah. on the deal, as opposed to spending a hundred thousand dollars a year to stay at a nursing home where you're going to get blended up fucking broccoli. Those nursing homes. So that gives you eighty five thousand dollars <throat> a year to play on That's hookers right. and wine. That's right. But what? But but as a nursing home, could you imagine trying to having to put up with those people? Fuck no. All the Somebody, insurance that goes with it, everything. Well, not just that. Like all those people that were used to doing shit their way. Oh yeah, there's like, a bunch. Of, yeah, you got a lot of old women that have been by themselves for thirty years, and by God, they made their toast with jam the exact same way every fucking day, and now you having to serve them. I mean. And I mean, it's it just the whole the whole nursing home thing. It's a racket. It's a racket, and it's sad, and it's you know, a long time ago, grandma and grandpa just went and lived with you. Uh huh. Which I'm glad we got nursing homes now. That's, for Jeff's old that ass. was my whole reasoning around having lots of kids. That I Somebody would hope that of one you. of them dumb motherfuckers <laughs> would make money and could take care of my ass when I got old. Who are you leaning on now? Who's it looking like it's going to win that race? Uh, shit, looking like Lindy. Ace, the two youngest. <laughs> you I'm so living out hope. Yeah. Our, our youngest yeah. one, we would be fucked. Huh? Our youngest, we would be fucked. Our best bet is Andy and Jesse. Yeah. Well, Jake is just like my oldest. He's just like me. That motherfucker gonna spend every dollar till he <laughs> fucking. He gonna, you know, I spend my shit on coyote hunting deal. He spends it on coon hunting shit and and fighting chickens. And then, uh, so he don't have a place in the back of his hey, house for she's Clay. All, she's gone all over the country with her husband, with pilot. So 
that leaves me with Dawson. And now Dawson would take care of me in a minute, but I don't see him being <laughs> the richest one of the bunch. So you you want to live with one of them that's got the most means. Yeah. Yeah. He'll take care of my ass. Yeah. They'll take a lot to feed my ass. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and don't and you deserve it, a, uh, a, them to bring a lady in to do sponge baths for you? you? God dang right. <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh yeah, Lindy's gonna be a nurse, so there you go. Maybe she'll maybe marry she'll a doctor. Know, maybe yeah. she'll know somebody. Well, she's wanting to be a plastic surgeon like my sister down there, so moved to Austin. I ain't moving to Austin. That's what I was fixing to say. So, so she's going to have to start her own deal up here. And Ace, like I say, he's mechanical engineering, and I don't know what the fuck you are if you're a mechanical <laughs> engineer. Work for the but, state of Texas, make pretty good money. Yeah. Or go to work for a big firm. Yeah. But I know because he saves every dollar. So he's going to be the one that's going to be the – he's going to have the most money but not the most fun to be with. Yeah, he has checks on the god dang deal that he – like one day when he first started working there, at, he'd been working at Oodles, the store in town. Well, I guess since he was like a freshman. And he is like a machine. I mean, and he is work, 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 and he'll never miss a day and he'll always be on time. And when somebody doesn't show up, they call late. When somebody needs a day off, they call a. I mean, he's like a fucking machine. When he was like a sophomore, they give him a two week paid vacation because <laughs> he is the top mother. And that these days, that is yeah. super it's hard to find. Yeah. And so he's Mr. Dependable. But I remember when he first went to work in there, he had like, I come in his room, he had five uncashed <laughs> checks on his damn deal. His first five checks, he didn't even cash one. Ace, you got to cash you motherfuckers. They're only good for so long. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't really require much money. Y'all feed me, and I, <laughs> I don't have to pay any rent or not. Nah, nah, nah. I don't require yeah, much. Don't put it in the bank, much. then. Yeah, he did not. So, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he paid cash for his pickup. And yeah, yeah. We had a guy at the city that they used to have to get on to. They would, cut, they would be bitching to me about it. They said, God dang, he doesn't cash his checks. So I asked him one time, I said, why don't you cash your checks? Well, hell, if I don't cash them, if everything ever happens to me, at least I got some money in my pocket. I said, it's a check. Cash it and put the cash in your bank, but let them clear their fucking books. We've got yeah, to clear that's the books what I'm here. You're fucking yeah. people books. Up <laughs> yeah. I said, cash your checks. I said, you can always put it in a savings account. I don't always trust the bank either. Well, then put it in. But, put he, would, but, but he'd rather have a check. But he'd have three or four. He'd have three can. months worth of checks. Yeah, that's and she'd be like, I wish he would cash his checks. Fucking tell him. Or give all them checks and write him one check and tear them up so you just got one out. But I tell you this. One day I, I told Ace. I said, Ace. Man, you work hard for your money, son. Spend that shit. Man, go fucking buy you something. Yeah. Splurge. Go do something. You know, buy something you like. <laughs> this motherfucker, he comes back, and he has bought a top hat, <laughs> an Abe Lincoln top hat, a fucking uh, uh, giant size crow beak, and it comes out to here, and a fucking uh, tablespoon this big. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is that? You know, I just something like that. It's, it's, <laughs> you just got—it's kind of an inside joke. I was like, "God damn, I don't want to know it." <laughs> what? what yeah. is, I would have splurged on something else personally. Oh my god, god damn, I was like, "What the fuck?" How did Ace grow up in a coyote man household? Like, uh, where, like what happened with Ace? Ace is the total. He is the. He is the. Uh, what do you call the youngest one in the family? And they beat to different drum. And well, he, yeah, he yeah beaten to different drum is the is the he has been drugged to every baseball, softball, football, basketball, soccer games, every fucking deal since he could fucking walk. And he didn't want no part of that bullshit. No. It, was, it was not his deal. Not new, I recognize it. Everybody used to, you know, tell me, I can't believe you don't make that boy. And he turned out he's the biggest one of my bunch mm -hmm. and strong as an ox and a uh, working little motherfucker. And, uh, and it's like, I can't believe you didn't make him play football. Or da, da, da. And I said, hey, you are what you are. Yeah. I said, I said, if he wanted to play football, he'd play football. I don't make my kids play anything. There ain't nothing worse in the world than to drag a kid all over the goddamn country that doesn't want to be there. Yeah. And I said, when I asked him, I said, you want to play? You know, that one day he wanted to play, get the iPod. And had motor, but, <laughs> just, I'm just yeah. here for the iPod. Yeah, I'm just here for the iPod. But, he had his goals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he had his deal and he had his little crew and – and he is the genius smart of the bunch, really? you know. Yeah, yeah. I have never had a B in his life, I don't think. And uh, but, but yeah. But that's so much of working a little motherfucker. Elliot, him and Lindy's haul uh, stacking hay, hauling hay, stacking other day. Boy, and that's so much can throw them motherfuckers. 
Well, now, what's he? Is he going to Midwestern? Uh, Vernon for the first first couple of years because he's got enough scholarships. He's got his college paid for the first two years. So is he, and he's working at Oodle still in yeah. Archer City? Uh-huh. So yeah. I guess he's the manager now, basically? <laughs> no, but he's top hand. They got him a manager, but... What is Oodles? Yeah, it's just a... It's like a grocery supermarket. store? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, grocery store. About the only thing. We, well, now they got Dollar General, but it's right across from the hall. So. Is y'all's Dollar General all clean and nice on the inside? It's got shit stacked everywhere. Shit stacked everywhere. I guess that's a Dollar General deal. That fucking deal. They can't find no help. And yeah, they it's, it's like ours. They had to close a lot of times last year, last summer. They had to close at eleven because they ain't got no air conditioning. Okay, let's let's that's talk. Let, let's talk about the actual working deal. We've got a worker shortage in our country. Oh yeah. What, but where the fuck happened to all of them? I don't have a fucking clue. I mean, all that, of a the sudden, the pay is like astronomical. Yes. I mean, I think about getting a part time job. Yeah. Target's paying eighteen dollars well, an I'm hour. Well, I'm not going to work at Target now. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. But they're going to eighteen dollars an hour. But I just I don't understand where all the workers. Went. I don't either. I mean, we had COVID, but before COVID, we didn't have a worker shortage. Then after COVID, did they all fucking die? I, don't I mean, but there's no workers. I mean, it don't matter where it's you go. Work. Archer City don't have no no workers. No. Knox City doesn't have any workers. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something. For me to find good hands, it's fucking impossible. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Same with Cowboys. I mean. I That's mean, a dying breed right there. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and like we were talking the other day at the cafe, I said, "Ain't no nobody's fault but our own." Yeah. And he said, "What do you mean?" Well, most friends, I, I'm abnormal. Almost always, I worked these young kids when I was coaching and knew these kids. You know, now that I quit coaching all the youth around, I don't get access to them kids that want to do it. But I would. I remember at one time, my branded crew, the oldest one on my branded crew, was 14 years old. Had two seven year olds, <laughs> Dawson and his best friend. They were one was Brandon, one was giving shots. They listen, don't they? Yeah, oh yeah, and I, it's and like they, the Cowboys oh, with John yeah, Wayne. Fu- yeah, that's exactly what I got video of it somewhere. <laughs> I'll find it. Well, next time I come over, it, it was wild. Hell, because Dawson's wearing a fucking hat that's eight times <laughs> size of him. I mean, it's one of the big giant bombers, <laughs> and he carrying that fucking little old, little old skinny ass, you know, weighing forty five fucking pounds, trying to brand them kids and. Yeah. Those kids, they're, but those kids don't work exist well, anymore. Oh, uh, you know, we can't work them kids. The insurance, you know, the, the liability. Everybody uses that as a crutch these days. Right. And I said, well, if you don't teach these kids how to work, don't bitch them. You know, that's what somebody they were talking about. Yeah, these kids nowadays, I said. It's your own fault. Who who, te- who is in charge of teaching these kids to work? I said, y'all are, y'all are, that, y'all are at fault. Yeah. These kids don't show up, and, and, and they are what they when they say uh, a child is a reflection of his parent, we re- we and, don't have redneck kids no more. And no, and we need them. I mean, oh, we, yeah. we live in a town with a thousand fucking people, and we don't hardly have any redneck kids. Yeah, right. And one thing I've noticed as being a parent is like my kids, they will go out of their way to impress me. Yeah, like if they th- if they think that something is important to me, they're at an age now to where like they show a little bit of interest into it, but. What we've done is we've just told the kids, "Oh no, 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 no! Like, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it." Do it. You, but you like you, it. it's our it's our responsibility as parents to show these kids push the way and push them a little bit. Yeah. And because other, I mean, kids, they're just you know they're little sponges. But if yeah. you're not filling them up with anything, then they're just going to be a, an empty sponge that wants to watch TikTok all and day. And they're long. so underestimated. Oh fuck! You they know, know because everything. you know people think, yeah. well, they they're not smart enough. Yeah. You know, in the rural community, our kids are driving tractors at seven years old. Yes, that's and, right. And yeah. grain trucks and and hauling that. And oh my God, I can't believe you you let them kids do that. I said y'all underestimate them kids. <laughs> Same with sports. You know that's why a lot of times when I coach. We were ahead of the game a lot of times. We may have been out talented a lot of times, but you know when I had them kids at seven years old, and it'll cost you wins in the early run. Right. You know, like that, throw the ball to the pitcher. You yeah. Know, in t ball shit, we never do that. I tell them, I said, you don't learn how to throw the ball to first base if you don't throw it to first base. We're not running to the circle in the pitcher, then have to get that taught out of you right and i said you throw that motherfucker over there to the first base and of course when they're little they'll throw that somebody <laughs> to the fence and then they'll they'll run the bases and my parents would kill me god damn we didn't know. I, said, I said we're not here to teach them to win we're trying to teach them how to play the game right, right. now Foundation. we learn how to win later on but the wins come well then the next thing you know like i'll perfect example when lindy and them 
And this is the, I think the second to the last game I ever got to coach them because the parents got to fight with each other mm -hmm. and disbanded the whole team. But for those three fucking years that we sacrificed them fucking wins, Winthorpe was undefeated in those three years. And we're playing them. We get up there. But my we we practiced situation ball from the time before they were five years old. And everybody's like, oh, they don't understand that bullshit. They, when they're five to nine, they, like you said, <laughs> suck up. Perfect example. We got bases loaded, no no out. Infield up, infield up. All my girls, they're fucking seven years old. They know what this means. Mm -hmm. Infield up. They come up in there. First ball hit the third base. My third baseman, old Desiree, she knows to throw it in. She throws it into Alyssa at catcher because this is when Lindy was playing shortstop. The show's in the catcher. My catcher knows enough that she's standing on the plate. She's got that force out. Right. Without ever even have to sell them. All right. Well, then the next thing you know, the next ball that's caught uh, is shot in the gap. Uh, Lindy catches it, uh, extended out, catches it in the air. That's one, one out. Up. And then crawls over to second base and gets the girl that hadn't tagged up on there. It's got a uh, double play, and we're out of the, no, the This is seven-year-olds. Right. That shit, there's no way that happened. And it, that, that game, there was three times they had bases loaded and out and did not get a single run. At seven and eight, well, they were eight, and we were seven. And uh, But that's how much we, we taught them. Mm -hmm. And we're, <laughs> the sad part of that whole fucking deal was we were beating them uh, nine to two, beating the motherfuckers nine to two. And like I say, they haven't been three of them. They're badasses. And uh, we well, got to put in them ones. <laughs> you know, them ones. We had one that was one of them ones. And she uh, didn't want to play ball. Tell me every day, I hate softball. Only reason I'm playing, my granny made me. My nanny's making me play. And and, and she was horrible. <laughs> and her nanny was, matter of fact, I got I got She come after this game, she come home uh, and had a, a eight page fucking essay on what, what a sorry motherfucker I was. And she knocked on my door and I said, Hey, so and so. And, so, and, so. and then she throwed all them papers into the deal and stormed out with tears. In her. And I was like, What the fuck was that all about? <laughs> and then she had page one. I had to read page, <laughs> page two. And all. I mean, well, was she right I on any of it? it. I was, oh, I yeah. Still got it. It. She started off writing it in the third person. My name is someone like her, her granddaughter saying, oh, well. I, I could be a better ball player if you would just give me a chance to play in the infield. I give her a chance in the infield one time. <laughs> She's sitting over there like this. Girl hit a ball and damn near took her fucking head off. She never even knew it. Mm. And I immediately, that's why we don't put them <laughs> motherfucking dogs in. <laughs> so anyway, I got to put this son of a bitch in. We're winning nine to two. Good time and to I do it. I'm going to be the giant slayer. I put that motherfucker in, and they hit every goddamn ball. <laughs> Found it. So I said, "Time out." I move that some bitch from right field to left field. They hit every motherfucker. That <laughs> some bitch come beat us ten to nine. But oh, uh, but oh, Walter, no boy is coaching him. Some bitch. He told me he said, "He goes, I, I'm gonna tell you, I ain't never seen a fucking team improve at, at so much." I said, "No, we were proving all the all the time." Right. I said, but we were sacrificing wins because we were learning how to play fundamentals and the game. And uh, and he goes, well, it's working. And then fucking next game, uh, I look up and we're fixed to play the next game. And I mean, like I say, by this time, we're kicking everybody's ass. And uh, one mom gets a fight with this mom. So then, I mean, in like a, a seven-year-old girl softball game, it's a, crazy. A fist fight. They get the fist fight out there. Were they good looking? Uh, yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they leave. They both leave. And I'm like, well, fuck. So I've got to adjust my lineup. And so I'm pissed. So I adjust my lineup and I move this one girl up in the lineup. Her daddy come up there and he goes, uh, my my daughter's not going to bat in that 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 spot. I said she she is, or you're going to take that motherfucker to the house. <laughs> by the time I'm he goes, well, I'll just take her to the house. I said I just told you to take that motherfucker to the house, and uh, she took it to the house. So now we ain't got enough playing. Uh, we forfeit. We're out of players, and kids never played again. Isn't that crazy? Now, and that was going to be a great group. Yeah. And I guess out of all them girls, only three of them played. I guess we had eleven girls, and only three of them ever played. High school ball. What's crazy is I guess Stanford, Stanford's got another stud pitcher at softball. Oh yeah, yeah. Like she's a you she's know that a one, freshman. And that's one thing old Lindy can say. You know she faced that 
That, Longhorn. Uh, uh, yeah, what's her name? I don't know. Lindy was yeah. three. City? Four, yeah. City, maybe? She's three, four off her. Never, oh, really? She never struck Lindy out. <laughs> she can always take that to her grave. <clears throat> but Stanford had the one pitcher she's pitching at Texas now, and evidently they've got a they've got a freshman now, and she's just as good or better. Oh, really? Than, at, at Stanford? Yeah. I'll be damned. Like, what are the odds of even having one player like yeah, that absolutely. to go do it? And now they've got, like, yeah, she took them all the way. They, they, I think they got beat the round before the state tournament, but evidently she's she's a real deal. Oh, and man. that's the thing with these small schools. If you don't have a pitcher, you're the softball. You're that's what it is. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Uh-oh. but I'm going to have to leave in a minute because I have to be in Throckmorton in an hour and 40 minutes. What time uh, is it? 3.30? 3.20, and I've got to leave my house at 3.45. Oh, okay. Well, we can start wrapping up. Um, one, I, was, I hate to do that, but. There was something else I was gonna say. Oh, but back to kids. Like you, you got to show them. Can't talk. You can't. You got. You can't talk about. It, you got to be about it. Like if you want, you got to show them the way. Yeah, and, don't, and they'll I, do. They'll do anything that you ask for. Like anything. they just want to make you proud. And I mean, they'll do anything. I can remember when Jesse was away. She went. She had a girls' trip with her mom, and the boys knew I liked turkey hunting. And it's just me and the boys. And it's the last weekend of turkey season. And they're like, "Yo, know, Dad, why don't we go turkey hunting?" I know you want to go turkey hunting. You don't want to sit here and watch us. Like, let's go turkey hunting. And, like, that was my eight-year-old saying it. And then he gets the four-year-old excited about turkey hunting. Yeah. But they did it just because they knew that it was something that was that I like to do. Absolutely. And they wanted to spend some time with you're, me. You're a good dad, though, and you spend time with your kids. And there's so many people that spend the time with their phone. Yeah. They have kids, but they're fucking raising their phone. Uh, they come home from work all day. They're tired. They don't want to fuck with their kids. So they put the laptop on. They put something on the TV for the kids or something, and they get on their phone, and they TikTok or whatever it is until is it's bedtime. The and, gospel. And but he, the, had heard, he had heard me talking to my wife like, oh, you're going to be gone last week in a turkey season, and, you know, me kind of bitching or something. And he's like, hey, Dad, like, you know, we, we can go with you. We'll be fine. Let's let's just go. Good, good. They're good kids, too. But he knew that it was something that I wanted to do. And, you know, he took an interest in it, too. He might not even like turkey hunting, but it was something that yeah. he could do with dad. You, you imagine today also, my dad was the butter maker or whatever it was of, of Little League Baseball. Bad News Bears. Falls, Bad oh, News yeah. Bears. He fucking, and this is no shit. My dad would have a Coors Light can in his back pocket and one in his, and a beer he hadn't opened in his front pocket and a cigarette either in his mouth or behind his ear throwing bat in practice. But the bottom bandits that he coached did not lose very many baseball games. Yeah. And he gave a shit that just the way he was. And I'm sure some of them other dads drank beer in the parking lot and watched practice, whatever it is. Yeah, and but bitch nope. about Buttermaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but today, if you had a guy coaching like that, could you imagine, my God, our coach was drinking a beer while he's at baseball practice. Oh, yeah, it would well, be the end of the world. Nobody thought shit of it. Watch the Bad News Bears, the original one. Oh, and they yeah. fucking go to the pizza place and the parents are drinking pitchers of beer and yeah, shit. And that was normal. Their sponsor was Maximus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's and like that travel baseball. We saw firsthand. We were at. We were not in a part of the travel baseball. We were staying in the same hotel. Travel baseball team was there. All, all the parents were getting drunk that night. But if the coach were out there coaching and had a beer, it'd be the fucking end oh, of the world. Yeah. yeah, that travel ball is the is the death of. And, and we did it, and we did it. But you know what we did? We played our town. Right. Our, our town, we were the travel ball. I, I want to take care of Archer City players. Right. And, yeah, it cost us wins. I could damn sure go pick up. But I play. hell, I remember I, I had a tournament team. I had a kid that couldn't catch ball, and he played first base. But he got real good at knocking it down and picking, picking it, up. it up. Yeah, and won a lot of championships. <laughs> won the lead. We stole YMCA championship three times with a boy that can't deal. But he was my boy's friend, and uh, he was Arch City. And as long as he wanted to play ball, we played ball because we ha- we were loyal to each other. Mm-hmm. And that's when, and we had like we had the one kid, old Rob Tucker, used to play with my oldest boys, and and he played, and he was a stud. But his dad didn't want him playing with us. He wanted him playing with them hot shot Wichita boys. So they went over there with them Wichita, and Rob hated it. You know, he come in, he pitched two no hitters on the weekend, come home, tell his buddies, and anybody, I don't give a fuck. He's playing with them other motherfuckers. Right. So it messed up his his karma with his boys. Mm-hmm. And he never even got to play high school ball. We because you know, it messed him. Well, we, we did that and drugs. <laughs> yeah, dr- drugs. We played, um, I did travel ball this weekend. We played, Dylan played, and we went to Abilene 
in the eight and under state championship, which I don't understand, it's a state championship. There's one like, every weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I told Tony that. Zero series. Tony yeah. goes. Tony goes. They all call them state champs, but yeah, they're they like, were, we're, our we're daughters right. are state champs. Yeah, there wasn't nobody outside of fucking Abilene, seventy miles. Yeah, I guess yeah. San Antonio didn't have a team that wanted to play, but but we went to the game and it was the Haskell. She plays in Haskell. And it was all Haskell girls. But fuck, we're playing a team from Cahoma. And I don't think every girl's from Cahoma there. And then you play another team; it's an all-star team, yeah. and they're all travel teams that play. And if that's what they want to do, it's fine. But I told I told them I said it's a shame. I said when Andy and them played little league ball, we played little league ball, and we would go and play as Knox City, and we yeah. would play other teams that were little league ball. The problem we would dealt with then is we would always win the first round of the deal. Then the second round, you're playing in Wichita Falls or Graham. Well, when you're from Knox City and you got 24 boys that are nine and 10 years old, you can't compete with. 400 kids at the same age in Wichita Falls. No. Nah. You can't do it. But at least you were playing as a team against other towns. Absolutely. But those travel teams, they got kids from here and, and that there. will benefit you playing as a team when you get in high school yep. where it all counts, where yep. it really counts. Yes. You know, your loyalty, your town, your school, and all that. And uh, that's why I was adamant. And, and sometimes we had to pick up kids from area towns. And, you know, because, you know, when Summer got here, Divorced parents, this yeah. kid's going with his dad, you know. So we, we we did pick up some guy. But my loyalty was to Archer City boys. My deal was to make Archer City better. And uh, hell, it paid off. Them boys, that first bunch I coached, they wound up winning state championship. And uh, even though, uh, like I say, we had two of our best players, they were they never played with us. They played which well, they would when they uh, – when they they didn't when their team didn't have one, I'll I'll never forget old Blaine Willett. First time he ever pitched, he's, we were at Bowie tournament, and his dad said, hey, "Yeah, he can come play with y'all this weekend." I'm, well, I was all right because he's stud, and he goes, ah, and I put him at pitcher, and he goes, "He's not a pitcher, he's a catcher, and he's bad ass for a catcher." But he had a bad ass arm, and I said, "Well, today he's going to be a pitcher," <laughs> and, and, and he he pitched three innings and struck every motherfucker out, went in close. Yeah, yeah, he ain't no pitcher. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, um, do you think well, I'm gonna change before we get out here real quick? Oklahoma girls softball is this the greatest dynasty of all time? Well, hell, you playing your fucking hometown every year? You ought to be goddamn good. I, I'm not an OU guy, but I mean, they've got to be debatable as to putting them in that kind of is one of the greatest college. Oh well, yeah, like, but like I say, they do have a decided advantage. That's kind of like what if Alabama, if the World Series was played in Alabama. Every year, every you would have every recruit, oh, every badass yeah. in the fucking world want to play. Hey, let's play where the goddamn world championship is every year. But and they uh, make it every year. Yeah, I know. It. And they're beating the shit. But, they he's, won. Saying, but he's saying the recruits, the high right. end recruits, go yeah. there because that's you get where the, the home, home field is. advantage. I mean, without a doubt, home field advantage is a home field advantage. I don't give yeah. a shit who you are. I, I no doubt that they're not badass motherfuckers because they're getting that recruiting advantage. Hey. There, you know, when I well, go why is Nebraska not doing it in baseball then? Huh? Why is Nebraska not doing it in baseball then? They play the World Series in Nebraska every oh, in year. Omaha? Uh, every single but I year. Thought, but where I thought it's in Lincoln. Isn't that where the sports school is in Nebraska? I think it's in Omaha. Yeah, yeah in Nebraska. But in they Lincoln. got home field advantage too. I'm just saying OU, and I'm not an OU person, it's amazing how good their softball program is. I mean, what did they win last night? 9 nothing again? I, yeah. can't remember. I mean, they just beating the shit out of everybody. It's not even yeah. close. Well, yeah, well, there's no doubt they're good. But like I say, I, I heard this, this same discussion the other day on a sports talk radio, and it and I had to agree with them. Hell, they got and like I say, you put uh, Alabama. Let's move to Alabama every year. You're going to have some badass recruits want to play in Alabama. It's just crazy that how much they're dominating. Yeah, every single and it's not like it's the same girls. Yeah. I mean, the, the big Alu Alu, the Hawaiian girl's gone. She yeah. fucking was a badass, and now they got somebody. I mean, they just keep reloading and reloading every single year. I mean, Air, Cal, uh, Alabama's good every year. Right now, Georgia is. Yeah, but OU softball is on that plane the last ten years. I don't know what exactly how many they've won in the last ten years, but they are dominating girls softball. Yeah, I love. It's softball. a good game. The World Series, the softball, because it's so much faster pace, more hitting, bigger scores. But right now, it's boring. Why? Because they're going to win. There's no game. Oh, I mean, right. a couple of years ago, UCLA well, might the be there. The, yeah, the that, the that's tournament. almost the reason to watch in case the, the underdog upset. happens to win. That, that would be nice. Yeah. But fuck, the other day, they was playing Oklahoma State. Like they, last they year were with, uh, what was that, uh, Purple School? Uh, it was one of the small schools. Uh, that's what I'm talking had about. Had the black the girl purple, that was a pitcher. Uh, 
Yeah, you know, those, uh, no, no, no. It was like Holy Purple. Cross or Iona or something. I don't mind that. You're gonna drive me crazy. They were Eastern in the, Carolina. Was it Eastern no. Carolina? They were in the they were in the tournament last college year. College World Series last yeah. year. Yeah, the little college black, or softball. 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 And it's, it's a little black girl that pitched for him, and she was good. I think it starts with an S. Uh, last uh, year, Saint Mary's. No, no. Oh uh, fuck! Tell me. I'm trying to find it. I got out loud. But yeah, cookies. you know they were an underdog team, and, and so people yeah. went for them. Yeah, and that little black girl was a she was uh, a badass. Yeah, uh, and a competitor uh, like no other. Northwestern yeah. was one of them. Yeah. No, that's not. Th- that was last year, wasn't it? <clears throat> it was Northwestern is where she went to school at. There's, but they're purple. That's everybody in the was, team or uh, the Grand Canyon. No, no. I don't think that's so. Last year, yeah, yeah, because it was Texas and Oklahoma, and Oklahoma embarrassed Texas. Remember, it's like forty three oh, to three. Or, or wait a second, that's bracket. Yeah, no, what the fuck is that? Yeah, Oklahoma beat Texas in the championship. Well, why game. don't I see Texas here? Is right down go below. Down. Go down. That's the way it is. Right yeah, there, oh, Texas. Oh, 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 oh. It was Texas and it was Northwestern. Go down. Go down. Go down. It was uh, Northwestern because they beat they oh you somebody beat oh you in the first game because oh you had to come back through the losers bracket last year I think. Mm. Oh, that's fucking killing me. It was Northwestern. Well, yeah, because then it well fuck I don't. Anyways, the, the 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 game used to be you didn't know for sure who was going. Last couple of years, Oklahoma's just completely dominated. But yeah. they they've got to be in the talk of one of the greatest sports dynasties ever in college. Oh I mean, yeah, they just I mean, and it's been ten years in a row of this or longer. If you're it, trying to get me to say anything good about I know you, hate OU. you are fucked. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm not an OU guy either, but it's been amazing uh, how were they 52 wins in a row now. Yeah, uh, they're going for a three peat. UCLA is the last team to do a three peat in the world in the college softball World Series. Fuck so. you, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> All right. The only reason that Texas don't fall into the Gulf of Mexico is because oh, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's that old saying why birds fly upside down over Oklahoma. Nothing to look at or shit at. That's right. Shit last on. episode, you were saying Texas. The no, same I said shit. I said no. if I had to pick a place to live, Texas would not be the state. Other than the uh, people. Fucking this nasty, fucking hot ass shit. I would want to go somewhere with running water and I'm pretty. I'm in agreement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that it it it's not. You know, it's got it's it's got. But, what was you said was a pretty place in Texas? <laughs> I said the wheat harvest. I couldn't. Yeah. Jeff said, like, "What's pretty about Texas? The wheat harvest? Motherfucker, you can go to South Dakota and get just tore up with some fucking pretty. There ain't nothing pretty in Texas. All right, goddamn sod Musterville yeah. right now. The, Guala- the Guadalupe. There is, is nothing. Yeah, Guadalupe, Plainview. I mean, big, fucking, big the, old, man. the old Frio. No, I've never you ever been there. down there. No, I've not been to Big That's Ben. Where I, I want to go. go. I haven't yeah, been there either. either. We may have to make a yep. road trip by I, now. I like it. I want to go to Terra Lingua. I'll, that's my deal. I want to go to the La Cava Inn. Yep. Had you watched that show, Badlands? Yes. Oh, that was badass. My boy uh, guided with that boy, that, the big guy that killed the bar owner, mm-hmm. Tony. Yep. My boy was a river guide with him in Vernal, Utah. Have you uh, seen these? That's where you got to stay out there. The bubble tents. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Some of uh. Okay, I gotta get y'all continue this. Okay, well we can get out of here, but yeah, the yeah. bubble tents is where I want to stay. It looks interesting. Watch the sky. That does. Watch the sky. All right, Clay, we're gonna get out of here. Jeff's abandoned us. He's got to go watch T ball. Thanks for coming out here. Hope enjoyed it. Hope, hope lunch was all right. It was over two and a half hours. Can't it went by. Pulled pork. Went by in a hurry. How long? Two and a half hours over. I'm telling you. Isn't it? Every time by. I come down here, it seems like we're in here for 30 minutes. Next thing you know, it's three fucking hours. Time warp. Yeah. All right. We're going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And peace. Oh. Father's Day's coming up. Go check out our sponsors. Boss Shot Show, Pacific Calls, Dive Bomb, Dirty Duck, Shin Gear, Looking Glass Podcast, Lucky Duck, Ducks Unlimited, Double T British Kennels, Mossberg, Sample Outfitters, and Alpha Outdoors.